Welcome back, folks. Contend for the faith. Back with a part 13, guys, in a series of videos I've been doing, uh, talking about disproving and disposing the black Hebrew Israelite false doctrine beliefs, guys. And in, in, in a segment I'm doing, been doing, uh, been talking about a Hebrew names of God relevant today. Uh, since we don't see them in a KJV Bible today, guys, a divinely inspired, widely circulated Bible today, guys, we, we want to know, just get an idea why they don't show up in that Bible, people, and, we, you know, in this last time period that we live in, so we get our answers from the Bible itself, okay, people, and we, we what we do is we just read the scriptures, and, you know, we, we asking that question, we looking at that. And we have to get it from God's word, okay, people, because he, I mean, don't, that, that, nothing surprises God, okay, you, you can't, you can't uh, think like that, okay, you can't do anything against God, we're concerning uh, his, his, uh, his own will, okay, you can't, you can't do that, okay, he has to allow that, he, 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 he already, uh, the four, he already know those things that's going to happen from the beginning, Okay, people, so you can't just take his names out or hide them or keep them away from the people so they don't know who his holy names is. Like I said, God is not Hebrew. He's not a Hebrew God, so he's just relegated to a Hebrew, a Hebrew name. He won't answer your prayer unless you use a Hebrew name. No, that's not that's not so, people. Come on now. That's not so, guys. And so I've been simply what I've been doing. Okay, I simply been using the Bible. I say I'm saved. I say I'm saved, and I believe I'm spirit free. I believe I had the spirit of God. Okay, guys, I'm not all that smart. Okay, people, I'm not all that smart, but I do try to be wise. Okay, according to what the wisdom that God give us, and any man can have it. Nothing I have that uh don't know can't nobody else have okay people okay you i mean you can have it also it's just that simple you can choose to be saved in the lord jesus christ okay you can choose to be obedient to uh the the, the conditions that god give us for salvation in the lord jesus christ those conditions do, do not come with knowing the hebrew names of god speaking hebrew or being a Hebrew and things like that. Those are not the conditions for salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, my friend, that's, that's about as plain and clear as I can get it. Okay, you don't have to be a Hebrew. You don't have to speak Hebrew, okay, to, to get salvation and the forgiveness of sin through the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to use his guy Hebrew names. You don't have to call on his Hebrew name when you're looking for salvation, you don't have to call on God Hebrew names when you are getting your, when you praying when you when you go into prayer. Okay, I've been that's what I've been simply talking about, just making it plain and clear, guys. Okay, throughout the Bible, uh, throughout these videos. Okay, God give us, my friend. Okay, God simply the Lord Jesus Christ simply give us conditions to meet. Uh, when it comes down to salvation, okay, and one of the conditions, I, and I've, I've said this before, and I'm going to move on, it's in the Bible, one of the conditions the Lord Jesus Christ give us out of his own mouth, even if it had came out of the mouth for another in the Bible, it would still be true, okay, because all scriptures given by inspiration of God, all is divinely inspired by God for us to have, it is given for our knowledge and understanding, and for our learning, okay? So one condition that God gives to get salvation, the forgiveness of sins, and to be filled with God's spirit, one of the conditions he gives is to forsake all. Okay, my friend, it's there in the Bible. Go look it up in the New Testament. He that don't forsake all. Okay, my friend, you forsake all for the Lord Jesus Christ. You got to be obedient to that. Salvation is free. But the Lord Jesus Christ paid for it already with, with his own blood. Okay, my friend, salvation is by way of grace through faith. Okay, it's, it's, it's by way of grace through faith. Leave any man can boast. That means there's no works or anything. No speaking in tongues. No knowing the Hebrew names or anything like that that'll get you forgiveness of sin and favor with the Father and peace and closeness and personal relationship with him. Okay, it's by saving grace through the Lord Jesus Christ. God chooses to save you by his own sovereign will. 
okay, and free will, okay, to do that according to your heart, what he sees there, what he sees there, does he save you, okay, through your obedience of the faith, does God fill you with his spirit, the Bible said God get a spirit to those that obey him, okay, guys, he does that, he gives the spirit to those that obey him, not to those that speak in a Hebrew language and know Hebrew and all of that. You don't even know the right, I mean, you don't even say it right. You, you're using Hebrew, English, in a way. That's what you're doing. So you're not even on the right track, my friend. You're not on the right track in a way. Okay, guys, and so one of the conditions you have to meet, you forsake all. He that don't forsake all for him. He that don't hate this one scripture, one, one place that he that don't hate his mother and father and sister and brother and his wife and, and, and hate his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. You cannot be saved and have a spirit and have a forgiveness. And you forsake all everything, God, your country. Okay, people, your race, your background, you do all of that. Okay, your education, your intellectual knowledge and understand you forsake all of that because when you get into the come into the kingdom of god you start to read the bible which is divinely inspired it's given and it's given it, the, the bible says it's given unto us to know the mysteries of the kingdom of god okay to those that are within the saints that's filled with his spirit okay no man know the things that god say he have the spirit of god they don't you don't have understand discern of things because they they're they not they not natural. The, the, the words of God we get in the Bible, they're they not natural like that. You, when you get the Spirit of God, you get somewhat of the mind of God. Okay, we have the mind of Christ. Okay, we have the mind of Him. Okay, so we get an understanding and a revelation and, a, and some wisdom and understand how the, the will of God and what He's looking for and calling for today. And going back, uh, you must forsake all for Christ. You forsake all your your, your background. You talking about you Hebrew? You get rid of that. You lose it. I made the videos about it, my friend. Talking about losing your identity, becoming one in Christ, and all that. Go look at that video. I give you scripture. I give you sound doctrine. Okay, guys, I do. I do that. I give you sound doctrine. I told you lose your Hebrew identity. You need a Jew or Greek or Hebrew or none of that. Okay, these guys were Hebrews before they were Jew anyway. I use that term, but in the Bible, use it in the New Testament, call them Jews, because that's what they would come out to be when, by the time Christ got there. They come out with Jews, had a religion that they were practicing. Okay, God and guys, God would call them the repentance. Even John the Baptist was calling these guys the repentance. Okay, and things like that. Call, he called them away for them practices and stuff like that. Okay, guys, so again, you forsake all. You get rid of Hebrew identity, you get rid of your, your, your background, social status, you, you forsake everything, come out of the world, okay? You come to Christ, your life is hid in him, okay? And the next thing God called, the other condition, he called us to deny ourselves. Any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me, okay? You And you have to bear your own cross, okay? You have to die to yourself. Okay, you die. That's what being born again. You die to yourself. You're being born in Christ. Okay, you had to deny yourself. Okay, people, you had to you had to bear with Christ's reproach. You had to self shame, humiliation, and different things that you put on Christ. He was, he, he was humble and he was humiliating different things like that. He's obedient also. He teach that in the New Testament. And he became obedient even to the death of his cross. Well, Christ calling us to the same thing. My Christian friend and Hebrews and different ones like that. He calling us. That's the testimony we ought to be giving today. Not talking about Hebrew names and all that. That's why I, said, I don't even want to do these videos. Okay, I didn't want to even do them and get into it. I don't, you know, I didn't never waste a lot of time studying Hebrew, the names of God. I see what I see in the Bible, but going into the, this other so-called sacred names and all of that and getting into this other stuff. I didn't been in, I haven't been in, been doing stuff like that. And I didn't care to get into all of it. Okay, people, because I know it's 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 not relevant today. Okay, guys, so God calling us to forsake all. You must. It's a must. I made other videos about it. You must deny yourself and take up your cross, okay, and, and live this Christian life that God is calling for. He's calling for that, to prove your love, Lord, and allegiance to him, not learning the Hebrew names and, and, and trying to speak Hebrew and all. That ain't what he's calling for. 
He wants us to know his names. But when we get a KJV Bible, we stay in the confines of scripture. We'll see those Hebrew English names, some of them there. Okay, and what God allows us to have in the Bible. And that's what we can use. Names so holy and sacred today. He don't want it all over the place. Because they polluting his name and different things like that. And they definitely polluting the church today. The church house today of the Lord. All this, with this last day, they this in apostate church and all the stuff they doing there. So God don't need his holy name. He don't, he don't stamp his approval on that. He don't want his holy name stamped on stuff like that. So we, he gave the translators, the, 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 gave them, they were divinely inspired to give us what we have in the Bible. We had to bleed that and go with it. Okay, and again, I'm going to go back and I'm going to keep moving. Uh, forsaken all for Christ. Denying oneself, taking up your Christ, cross and following Christ. Bearing Christ's reproach. Bearing his reproach. If you, if you, if you get Christ biblically the way you're supposed to have him and call yourself a Christian and all of that, well, you're going to have to bear his reproach behind that when you call yourself a Christian. Okay, and you say you practice Christianity, and you look at how they talk about Christians today, and you look at how they talk about the religion of Christianity today, even we, we you know, the one, they really they put a bad label on the mainstream Christianity and paganistic Christianity we see today. Okay, but we still have to bear that because you're talking about us. They generalize us, Christians, so we have to bear that reproach. Okay, a lot of people today don't want to be called a Christian and want to be identified with practicing Christianity. And the Christianity I'm talking about today is in the Bible. Biblical Christianity, we see in the Bible, but it comes with feet washing and, and praying and taking communion and, you know, and, and going to pray for the sick and being humble and turning the other cheek. All those things God called the Lord Jesus Christ preached and teached and, 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 and told us and, and plus what we see on in, in the Gospels in the New Testament, the epistles and different things like that, what we're supposed to observe and do, that's the Christianity that we see. We just put the entity on there. We're being like Christ. Okay, so you have to bear Christ's reproach. Okay, God, and then you can't get caught up in trying to, you can't get caught up in trying to save your own life. That's a part of forsaking all. Okay, you can't try to save your own life. Christ said he didn't try to save his life or lose it. So you can't try to put, you can't try to save your own life, excuse me, a lifestyle. Okay, guys, you can't do that. You got to solely and wholly put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, guys, and sometimes I know it's not easy to do when we in going through different changes and different things in our life. And we try to do things to make it better and try to save our own lives and try to adhere to certain mandates that these guys bring up on us, guys. You can't do that now. I'm telling you, you can't do that. My family, that you know, a lot of my my children and stuff like that. Why, uh, my my boys and my my daughter, my sons and daughters, they know better. They know not to give in to these ma mandates. Okay, guy, because they they can see what's going on, and can what can happen to them. They don't give in to that stuff. Okay, people, we suffer that thing if it take us out of here. Okay, guy, and I know we got another one coming shortly. When they bring in a new reset, maybe pretty much next year, and may, if they start at the end of this year with, with, with trying to, you know, really put a lot more cash off the scene, we can see a mandate come in. I mean, we can see it, it's going to come in next year. Because usually what they do, usually what they do, they'll start something and, you know, pretty much in some cases like they did with coronavirus, you know, at the end of the, the president start the end of his last year in office or in his presidency, and then he and then that president brought in a number of things, and then he like he brought in really the mandates came in with Trump. Mandates started to come in, vaccine mandates started to come in with him, and and so when Joe Biden came in the office, they the mandates got even you know stiffer you know about what they want to do, stricter about what they want to do and how they want to do it. And that individual that, that agreed to bring a lot of mandates to come in, he don't have to get any <clears throat> backlash for it. And the president's in the office, he don't have to get any backlash for it either. Okay, so they'll do stuff like that. They'll bring, they'll have one president start certain thing, another one to pick it up. And neither one of them can be really blamed for it because he's not in the office now and all that. And, you know. But anyway, guys, you, you pretty much have to, those are the conditions you have to meet to be saving the Lord Jesus Christ. You got to forsake all. You got to. Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Christ. You got to bear your, you got to, you must bear Christ's reproach. He said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you also. 
Okay, they kill me, they're gonna kill you also. Okay, Kai. Okay, you live in Christ Jesus, you live God in Christ Jesus, you're gonna suffer persecution, you're gonna bear his reproach because you're trying to live Christian life. Okay, and things like that. Okay, and you must try to save your own life. You can't you go you can't try to save your own life physically, uh and, and, and spiritually or your social status and all of that in this world today, trying to keep everything, your background and all of that. Okay, you can't try to uh, save your own life. You are losing people. Okay, and in this last, we did, we're in a new par in an end time paradigm today. Okay, we're in a last time a last end end time paradigm. You give into these vaccines and things like that. God will not pretty much won't save you from that. Okay, that's why you said my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. That don't mean you won't go to heaven. Okay, people, that don't mean you when you take the if you saving the Lord Jesus Christ. You didn't know certain things because they didn't tell you, and you give into these mandates and different things like that, and and you mess around and get taken out. There's certain things happen to you. Uh, that's on you, okay? You don't lose your salvation because of that, but you can't try to say you don't like God. Let them, you, God let you slip out of here, people. You get sick and die. Certain things like that. God let you slip slip out of here, okay? But this last uh, trial that's gonna come up on the whole world. Okay, the last trial is, is, is that new reset that's coming in that'll take everything, take mostly everything, uh, take everything digital currency and stuff like that. And some of you guys know, you guys looking at my video, you stay in certain cities where some places don't take anything, but uh, they all they take is a card. They don't take cash no more. And that's a precursor and a sign that the cash will go off the scene. There's so much violence out here in the world, just violence. Uh, they blame that on violence and different things like that for not receiving cash in certain places, talking about robbery and stuff like that. And so that's the reason why, another reason why they want to bring cash off the scene. That's just one reason. Okay, there's plenty of reasons for them to do that because they want to control everybody and your, your money and stuff like that. Okay, people. <clears throat> and then they're going to want you to give in to the mandates that they're going to bring behind that. Okay, you got to be a part of the system. You can't, you won't be able to buy and sell. Okay, and stuff like this. So at least to at least to the mark of the beast. All right, guys. But anyway, uh, anyway, uh, let's get back here. Uh, God bless you guys. Looking at the video, this is probably my part. This is part thirteen. Gonna try to maybe be my last one if I can finish up <clears throat> and things like that. And I've been talking about the relevancy of the Hebrew names of God, and I've been pretty much letting you guys know that it, these names are not. Uh, relevant uh today because we don't see them in the bible they does mean <clears throat> you can just get them and, and get an idea that god did have some sacred names of his and he revealed them according to his character of what he was doing if he, he he's talking about being god almighty or the creator god he had a name for that he was talking about being the the, the self you know self-existent one he had a name for that or the all-sufficient one he had a name for that, uh, uh, the, the Savior. He, I mean, we, we have a name for that. Okay, you get what I'm saying, guys? So God had different names and, and things like that. Okay, and when you see them in the Old Testament, we see them in caps. They had to be in caps and stuff like that to know what that name mean. Okay, when you're talking about Yahweh and, and, and uh, Yah, some, you know, we, we see Jah there today. Okay, we see Jah and, and stuff like that, but we we don't see Yahweh that we see Jehovah. Okay, we don't see Elohim and El Shaddai at or not. But when we see these words like Lord and caps and stuff like that and God and caps, okay, they relegate that over to sacred names and stuff like that. And, and, and that express his his power and his deity and, and things like that and his sufficiency and, and him being his him being a self-existent one, we, we we look at those things, but when we get to when we start to come away from that, we have to, we have to, we have this, we can't be one dimensional. We have to come into another mindset because we add another covenant here. Okay, and, and like I've said in other previous videos, God did away, uh God turned his face away from the Hebrews today. God is not Hebrew. He turned himself away from the Hebrews because they are abominations and different things like that. Even a rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ, their Messiah, he turned away from these guys. We see that in Isaiah chapters uh, 1 
And we see, and I read it in a few other places too. And and so after 70 AD, God had really ran these guys off. The temple was destroyed, and all of these guys marching the captivity had been there for the past 2,000 years. Left a remnant, a small remnant there. And all these guys lost, they died out, lost their, their Hebrew name. So God had really kind of faded off the scene. Okay, and God, that's what he that's what God was doing. Okay, God, and, and they started to pick those names up pretty much. You know, in the 19th century, they really, they well, I, I could, we'll go back, we'll go back, we could pretty much go back to the 16th century, they started to kind of come out with them, even in the 15th century, they started to come out with some old names, they started to revise them and stuff like that, okay, guys, but they, they don't, they have, that you don't have the, you don't have the, you have more of a Hebrew, English type of language today and stuff like that and that's what we see in the bible in the 16 1611 also kjv bible we see more of a hebrew english names and stuff like that we you know that's not real hebrew okay guy that's what these guys gotta have to you know themselves today and, and so but when we get in the, when we get to the when we get to that blood covenant that we have in the lord jesus christ today like i've said god becomes our father we call him father Okay, we we use the term God the Father, not no we don't just we don't use the term. If you read the Bible, you will see that when they're talking about God did this and the thing, like they don't just using his name like that. It's talking about his you know, him being the God of all gods. Okay, the those that even Israel were worshiping, they were worshiping other gods. And he and they had to use that and they wanted to put capital letters there or Lord G there to let you know this is this this is talking about the God of gods. You know the the, the 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 creator God, the Almighty God, the all sufficient one that able to provide even okay to even provide He's all sufficient even for His own namesake, okay God to preserve it. It's still there. You can you can pretty much get an idea about His Hebrew name. So many of them, okay, you know Yahshua and all that, and and they have different names for them people, so it can be confusing. And so we move away from that and we look at what we see in the Bible, the New Testament, we get we see the name God there, G-O-D, and the New Testament, capital G-O-D. Okay, we see it there in the New Testament. But we see the we see Jesus there. We see the name Jesus there in the English today. We have Jesus, okay, in the English, and that's what we looking at today. Okay, people, and we look at we don't look at the name we see Jesus, we don't look back at his Hebrew name. We simply look at the name, we, what the name mean today, because that's what he's doing. That's what the Savior came to be today. Okay, his name means Savior, God saves, different things like this. Some people put the Hebrew name on there. Uh, yes, you will say, well, uh, you know, different one. He's God in the flesh. So you can call him El Shaddai say, Elohim say, okay, Yahweh saves. Okay, people, he's God in the flesh. So all those names, the Hebrew names that apply to God in the Old Testament, they can apply to the Lord Jesus Christ because he's God in the faith. The fullness of the God hid the wells in him. Okay, he, he's all there. He's Jehovah. Okay, people, he's a, he's a self-existing one. Okay, he, he's with the Father from, from everlasting to everlasting. He is the I am. Okay, and the I am that I am. He's all of that. When we're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, we see in the New Testament, people. Okay, so he's all of that. He get credit for being all of that from the Old Testament to the New. Okay, God. And, and let me let me say this also, people. Let me make mention of something real quick. Uh, I'm 23 minutes in, but let me say this for you guys that are looking at the video. And, and, and one of the reasons that God, you, God take away his names and stuff like that. And he really don't want you to really get into using them, people, because they, they make mockery of God, Hebrew names, so-called Hebrew names today. And, and I noticed we have one of these so-called Hebrew names. Listen now, listen, people, because the devil, do, he does this with stability, with, with, you know, on the slide, okay, people, and stuff like that. When we when it, it, we have a we have somewhat of a Hebrew name today. Listen now, we have a Hebrew name today on the scene, and I know some of you guys that <clears throat> study Hebrew pretty much don't recognize, but I ain't, have, I ain't never heard you guys say anything about it. And we see it there. It's a search engine 
that we see there with the name called uh, Yahoo. Okay, Yahoo. Okay, with capital. With a, with a, I mean, with an explanation point there sometimes. Yahoo. You done heard them say that term. You hear them say that, you know, and you, we see it there, Y-A-H-O-O, -O, Yahoo. You done seen that before, guys. I'm not just speaking these things. So we have to be, we have to be awakened to certain things when we see it. Okay, we see that Yahoo, and if you it, it can, it, for some concern, it can be a play on name because it's saying Yahoo, meaning who who is God? Okay, Yahoo, who mean who is this Yah? Okay, like they, you know, like they, the meaning that word Yahoo, okay, and stuff like that, you know, like they don't know it. Okay, people, and I, I, you know, I'm just letting you know we see that word Yah there. With the, and, and we have another word in the Bible, they call them Yahuwah. Okay, guys, so you get an idea when we see these these words here. Okay, they use the term Yahuwah also. Uh, y, see, Y-A-H-U-A-A, -A, Yahuwah. Okay, they got a term like that. We got a term here, Yahoo. Okay, or Yahuwah. It could be the same thing if you want to pronounce it like that. Okay, with caps, but so you see when we get into these names and stuff like this, Hebrew English names, okay, God, they use it in vain. That Yahoo right here, if it's a, it could be a Hebrew name of God. Okay, don't make no mistake about it, people. Okay, because you don't like you're not really having real Hebrew names. They got Hebrew English. Okay, so you're not really you know you don't pronounce them and not you're not pronouncing it in Hebrew in a way a so-called Hebrew language or dialect. So okay, you when we, again when we start to really when we start to talk about the Hebrew names of God and why we don't see them in a KJV you know English Bible, we get an idea that they not be relevant, not to put a lot of focus on them. They don't earn your salvation, don't get you praises, else don't do none of that for you, my friend. Okay, guys, that that, that come through a saving grace in the Lord Jesus Christ. He here today. Okay, this is the age of grace today and salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ for both Jew and Gentile that will call upon his name. You can have it and be filled with the divine nature of God to have his spirit on the inside of you. Okay, if you obey him, he'll give you his spirit and you walk into things, walk in obedience. And that's what God is calling for, your obedience. Not knowing the name, but knowing what the name means when we see that name Jesus and that name Lord in the New Testament. God wants, Jesus wants to be Lord over you today. So many of them rejected him back in the past during his time when he came on his earth. They rejected him as being the Messiah, as being Lord, as being the Savior and different things. Like They rejected that, and then and God sent that to the Gentile. He closed the book on the Hebrews. He closed the door on them, and, and they named different th the Hebrew names and all of that. He shut the door for that time period. They dry bone. They'll be raised again later on, and God will have a new name. Anyway, I'm going to get started. I got a few scriptures here. We're going to oh, just want to touch bases with that. Okay, guy, and I got a few. I want to read some scriptures here to, you know, today. And we'll be looking. So God is really looking for obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ today. That's what the New Testament teaches today, people. Okay, my friend, when you get in the New Testament, it's not talking, it's not just looking and dwelling on Hebrew name. It's not looking back at the Old Testament law, statutes, and commandments that God gave the Jews. Okay, he gave the Hebrews, I mean. He gave the Hebrews, and they weren't Jews back then. They weren't Jews back then. They were Hebrews. Okay, they didn't, they didn't become Jews until later on after Babylonian captivity. And stuff like that. When they went back into the land, they picked up a religion, started to practice it, and built the temple up. They started. They didn't have the Ark of the Covenant then. Okay, they lost it. They didn't bring it back. Okay, and stuff like that. The Ark of the Covenant went off the scene. Okay, guys. And so they come up. They they became Jews during the time of Christ. They were Jews then. They were the children of Israel back in the day and stuff like that. Before they, they went into cap. Before they went into uh, uh, Egypt. Okay, they were children of Israel, okay, and they became Hebrews and stuff like that. They became Hebrews later on, okay, they became Hebrew, nomadic tribe, they became wanderers and different things like that, okay, and when we see them in the New Testament, they are Jews, okay, when we see them in the New Testament, they are Jews, okay, they still Hebrews, but they consider Jews according to religion that they practice and different things like that, they believe in what they're doing. 
and they were just in a world of hurt back then because they was killing people just for stealing and being, you know, and different things like that. They were, you know, they was going further than what God had called for them to do. They was real zealous of that thing, but they wasn't doing it. Why? They didn't know God after the other Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what God was calling for today, back then. Anyway, let's let's read a few scriptures here. We're talking about, we, we not again, we're not just looking at the Hebrew names of God. They're not relevant, so we move away from that now. And we look at, we know they're not really relevant no more than what we have in the Bible. And, and, and God, he, 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 he kind of lightly esteem them today. Okay, people, he don't regard him today. He wants you to know his name, but he, he won't go further than that. He wants you to know his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, people. Okay, that's what God is at today. That's what he's looking at today. Those that can get eternal life in him and rule and reign with Christ. The kingdom is coming in. Okay, we at the end of the age. Okay, Bible said in his last time have God sent forth his son. This is the last time period that we end. And it's been going on for the past 2,000 years. The Bible said the end of the world have God sent his son uh, to put away to put away sin. Once at the end of the world, have God sent forth His Son. I'm just paraphrasing it. So that means God was saying two thousand years ago, we was looking. It was at the end of the world. But that's that's how God look at it when He sit up in the everlasting. Okay, that's the that's the thought and the, and that He gives the translator and the writers and different ones like that. That's writing and and, and, and you know and things like that to the thought that this is the last time. Even Peter said this is the last time. Okay, uh, John, well, Peter, I think Peter said the end of all things is at hand. Okay, and that was nearly 2,000 years ago. John said, if I'm not mistaken, this is the last time. This is the last time. And John wrote that at the, at the end of the book of Revelation almost. In the book of uh, 1 John and 2 John, he wrote that. This is the last time an Antichrist must going to come. And there are many Antichrists in the world today. But this is the last time we know. Things like that. And again, I'm paraphrasing it. Okay, so we're in the very last time, my friend. Okay, guys, when you seen the coronavirus pandemic show up, worldwide shutdown, people sit, dying all over the place, and stuff like that, everything closed down. You best understand, don't never take that stuff lightly. And the Antichrist, beast, he was in power, and, and this beast system was behind that destruction and death. That was the rider on the white horse, and don't soon forget it. Okay, God, that's the ride on the white horse. He'll be back. Go read Revelation chapter 17. Start at the beginning. Okay? I'm talking about coming out the bottom of the pit and, and all they're going to want the, the, the beast that was, is not, yet is. Okay? The, go read that. He's coming back. He's coming in the office. He's coming back. When he do, you guys going to be in a world of hurt that don't take these prophecies serious about his Antichrist. And I'm thinking about making a video. I'm serious. I'm thinking about making a video about this guy. I've made videos in the past. I'm thinking about making an in-depth video about this guy just to give put give you my 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 portion of understanding and my contribution to this guy. He's gonna get reelected, no question about that. And be a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Revelation chapter 13, verse 3 through 5. Okay, and Antichrist does come out of this country here. Uh, the last, this country is the hand of most of nations. Okay, over there in Jeremiah uh, chapter 50, uh, 51. Okay, this is a hand of most of nations. Okay, people. And so you got to understand Babylon right here, this country Babylon, the hand of most of nations. Talking about the old beast system. It's talking about a country, a, a superpower of the world. Okay, guys, I'm not going to establish that and go into in depth. Anyway, let's look at some things here because we're talking about not we look at we're looking away from the names of the Lord Jesus Christ today. We look at we we know he, you can call him Yeshua, but he, we let, let's look at his the names we see in the Bible. We see what the name Jesus means, Lord. It means ruling, lordship, and master, and different things like that. Okay, and what he he wants to be obedient. We're gonna see that. We, we read through the Bible. The Bible give us the definitions of his name and what it means and, and what and, and, and it express it to us as we read throughout the Bible and show what it ought to be. Matthew chapter six, verse nine. Matthew chapter six, verse nine through thirteen. You didn't heard this one before, but let me read it here again. It said, After this manner, therefore pray ye. Okay, well, I, I this ain't the one I was gonna use start off with, but I use it because and, 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 and that then I read, I go back to the thought. That I'm supposed to bring up in a way that when in the New Testament covenant, we God becomes our father and we start to call him father. 
Okay, guys, and we got a prayer here that I'm going to read here. And we can get an idea about the prayer because it's not centered around Hebrew names and, and, and different things, anything like that. It's in a new covenant and we, we get an idea here and we can look at the Lordship of Christ or the Lordship of God. And we're not looking, we're not looking, we're looking away from it now because we see the Lordship is calling us to obedience and that his will will be dead. And so let's look at it here. So after this man, this is the Lord Jesus Christ talking. He said, after this man, I pray ye our father. Okay, I've said that in the past in other video, but we see Christ commanding us to do this for those that are saved and been brought into the kingdom of God. We're sons and daughters of God. We're part of the household and family of God today. So that's why, that's the reason, that's the reason why we get away from the Hebrew name. We don't, because we call him father. We can say Abba. Okay, Abba Father. Okay, people, Father, Father. We can call him Abba Father. God wanted to make that clear. Gave us a Hebrew English right there. Abba. Okay, call him Abba Father today. In this manner, therefore pray, this manner, uh, therefore pray ye our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Okay, yeah, his name is holy, guy. He's saying that. But that don't mean you say the name, it's because it's holy. His name is holy. Okay, and the translators knew that and understood it. Okay, and when it said, hallowed be thy name, it capitalized that W, that H right there. That let us to know to think about that, hallowed uh, be thy name. Okay, his name is hallowed. His name is holy. Holy is his name. Okay, guys, <clears throat> thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Okay, that's what we're praying. That's what, we, that's what you're supposed to be teaching and preaching, uh, guys. Not bringing in the Hebrew Israelite uh, kingdom and all of that. That ain't what it's talking about. It's talking about both Jew and Gentile and things like that. Thy kingdom come. The Lord Jesus Christ's kingdom come. Thy will be done. You see that, people? Thy will be done. When he's had the Lord of your life, okay, people, his will is being done. Whatever God is calling for. That's what Lord means today. It don't point just at a name and things like that, okay? It don't just point at a name, Adonai, and all of that. It's talking about his lordship and rulership in your life, okay? And I got scriptures I'll show you. That will be done. You hear that? That will be done as it is as it is in heaven, okay, people? That's what they're doing. They've they, they, they been obedient to God in, you know, in his word uh, in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Let me say this first of all. Also, God, sometimes misspeaking and things like that. You had to look over. I might say the wrong thing. That We both can agree that's the wrong thing. I misspeak on certain things. Just... Look over that. I, I will do that. You know, occasionally I, I do that by accident or mistake. And lead us not into temptation, into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, uh, the glory forever. Amen. Okay, guys, you hear that? So you you, you get an idea. Okay, people, we, we we're talking about the lordship of God today. We look back at that. God wants not just not just really know the Hebrew names. But the under the the, the 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 live and walk in the meaning of the name, the reverence the name, and and that's how we get over here in the New Testament. We start to see the name God Almighty. When the Bible talk about them worshiping other gods, and when they do that, they use it with a small g, okay, and stuff like that. And then when we talk about God, and we we see a capital letter, we see a capital G there, and we got a scripture over there talking about God being the God of gods. And so we, we give reference, the scriptures even give reference, reverence to him being the God of God. It ain't just so much his Hebrew name, it's so much as his authority, okay, his power, his deity, his character, his his his, his, his uh uh and things like that, okay, guys. Anyway, let me let me try to move on here. I want to I want to try to move on a little faster than what I'm doing. I, I want to start off with a lot of talk. I had to do a summary. And kind of just get you guys an idea and where I'm where I'm at today. And we go over here to John chapter two verse five. It said, "It said, uh, and the devil taking him up into a high mountain, show him unto show him unto, unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time." Okay, guys. And let me make sure that I <clears throat> let me let me make sure I got the right one here, people. Excuse me. Let me see what I have here. For John, for number two, should be uh John chapter fourteen, verse fifteen and eighteen. So I kind of I kind of lost that. Let me see what I did. Let me 
I kind of lost my kind of lost kind of lost my place here, guys. That ain't, that ain't the one that I want. I'm gonna come back to that. Let's go to Matthew chapter twenty-one, verse twenty-eight and thirty-one. It says, and "Jesus said unto them, Bread I say unto you that ye shall which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of His glory, ye shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. But uh, for everyone that have forsaken house of brethren, uh, no." I'm still in the wrong place. Excuse me, guys. Bear with me for a minute here. I'm in the wrong place. Matthew 21, 28 through 30. 30 28 through 31. Uh, here we go. Uh, and, and we're talking about obedience again, guys. So let's look at something. He said, but uh, what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, son, go, uh, go work today in my vineyard. Uh, he answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether well, them twain did the will of his father. Okay, they said unto him the first, Jesus said unto them, Bread, I say unto you that the publicans and heralds go into the kingdom of God before you. Okay, guys, and really what Jesus is, again, he's not talking about it. We're not looking at, we know, clearly we know that we're not looking at a Hebrew name. We're simply looking at obedience. That's how you get into the kingdom, my friend, through your obedience, okay? And I gave you the conditions that get you there, okay? And after you get there, like the scriptures say, uh, and I have it, uh, I might have, I, I'm sure I have it in my lineup, and I can just go ahead and read. I'm gonna read it again. The scripture said, "Man shall not live by bread alone." We know the Lord Jesus Christ, that bread of life. Okay, so we get Him, but we don't just live by. We don't just get Him. We still had to walk in obedience to Him. Okay, what the scripture said, "Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceed up out the mouth of God." Okay, well, you, we, some of you guys will say, "Well, you go back and look at the Old Testament." No, God's not calling to. He's not calling for that. Okay, you got the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will show you what you're living by today. We not we don't live under the laws, statutes, commandments of God. Okay, because we not we can't keep everything. We don't have everything we need to do it in a way. What God is calling for. Okay, people, you don't have it today. You don't have a you don't have a temple. You don't have a you don't have a uh, you don't have an ark of the covenant. You don't have animal sacrifices and all that. And like I said. If you're going to do all that, that's what you, you had to put away Christ, okay, and, and practice that religion. You got to have everything to go along with it, and you don't have that, so you want to put a, you want to put Christ up and then do the other stuff too. No, it don't work like that, guys. That, that just don't work like that. That's confusion. All right, let me go to Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 and 24. Uh, again, Jeremiah 9, chapter 24. 23 and 24. Uh, I'm, I'm having a little trouble here with some scriptures here today. <clears throat> Keeping up. Maybe I'm talking and pulling them by accident. Uh, it says, Thus said the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. You hear that, people? Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. And, and that can really be talking about these intellectual people out here, okay, today. And it could be talking about Christians also that, that might think they know so much. Okay, people, let's go. Let's thus said the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, let not the mighty man glory in his might. Okay, these guys in power and different ones like that. Uh let not the rich man glory in his riches. Okay, you hear that, people? Listen now, listen. So let him that glory, glory and did that he understandeth and knoweth me. Okay, you hear that, people, that uh that know me that I am the Lord. You hear that guy that I am the Lord. Okay, guys, he can, he can, you can go back and look at that term. Uh, uh, you, some of these guys go back and look at the name when it said I am, okay, uh, or the Lord. They go back and look at the, the name of with God and stuff like that. And it takes away from him not just saying I am the Lord, the, the one that these guys should serve and worship and be obedient to. That's what he's saying. Okay, the one that they should uh, acknowledge and glory in. Okay, and that's what we look at when we want to deserve, when we start to get a look, get a better understanding of it. Okay, people, we see that word Lord, we don't automatically trans, we don't automatically transfer uh, over into a name and different things like that today. Okay, but uh, people say, but let no man glory in, 
but let him that glory, glory live that he understandeth and knoweth me, okay, that I am the Lord, which exercise love and kindness. You hear that, people? Judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Okay, guys, you hear that? Uh, you, you, we get a we get a under we get an understanding what God is calling for today, and I'm gonna keep going. We'll look at something over here in the Book of Jonah, chapter four, verse one and two. Just getting an understanding how you know, uh, you know the, the the nature of God and things like that. Uh, we look at his character and the nature of him when we when we get away from looking at the names. Okay, and stuff like that. We're in Jonah chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Let's see what Jonah had to say to God. Just getting an idea. And, and Jonah a little upset because God didn't judge Nineveh. He turned away from Nineveh. Uh, after Jonah had preached to these guys, he, he he went and sat up there on a hill. And he was displeased because God hadn't judged them. And so let's get an idea of what, the, what and Jonah a little upset about it. But let's see what Jonah let's see what Jonah had to say to God. Anyway, he said, but Jonah, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he and he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord, okay, and that's in all caps, okay, there, and that's in all caps. And, and, and they don't have to say and he played and he prayed unto the Lord, uh, until Adonai El should die. <clears throat> when we say the Lord, we that's giving reverence to him. We use that term there. Cause like I said, he, he, he's master and ruler, okay, and different things like that, okay? We his servants, okay, people? We his servant today through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we're doing today. He's the Lord of our lives today, okay, people? So that's when we see that term Lord there. Yes, in our caps, okay, people? But we got to look at it. We look at it in another form. Okay, people today, cause it does mean it does mean a Hebrew name and stuff like that. Oh, him, but if, if, if we look in that the meaning of the name, the meaning of it. Okay, people, and I keep going saying, I, and he prayed unto the Lord and said, "I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my sin when I was yet in my country? Therefore, I fit, fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God. You hear that, people? A gracious God. Okay, and it ain't talking about." Uh, it ain't talking about gods, you know, one of the gods with a small G. So it's got to be talking about, it got a capital letter there. Okay. The capital G there, the gracious God and merciful, slow to anger. You hear that people in a great kindness and repentance thee of the evil. Okay. And different things like that. And so that's, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at the nature of God, things like that, his character and, and his ability to be merciful, okay, guys, and gracious to a number of people, even us, okay, guys, that those that are, was in sins and trespasses and things like that. Okay, guys, and let me look at, let, let's go to another scripture here. Let me look at something because I really missed something here. Romans 13, John 2 and 5. Okay, we'll go to John 2 and 5. Uh, We'll look at some over here in John 2 and 5, guys, and we're talking about the Lordship of Christ. We'll just get a small idea over here. Jesus, was at a, he was at a wedding banquet, and he turned the, he was getting ready to turn the water into wine. And we'll see what his mother has to say, guys, because we're looking at the Lordship of the Lord Jesus today. And so much as looking at his Hebrew name, because we, we, we can get thrown on. Some of you guys, you guys are one track, okay? You, you, you're one dimensional, okay? You're shadow minded. Okay, and the only thing you can think about the Hebrew names of God, because you think that's where your favor comes. You think being a Hebrew and you the Hebrew names of God, God listening to you guys, when we know the door is closed there. You, you come through the sheepfold uh, today, the sheep gate today, the sheepfold, okay, and you come into the you come into a standing covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ today where you lose your identity. Okay, guys, you don't you lose your identity. You're not using the Hebrew names of God. Many Christians around the world have been saved. Using the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we see in the Bible today. God is sorry. He knows that and understands that he's saving many that call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today. That name we use today in English. Okay, and many ones around the world using eight language that they have, they still call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, people, let me, let me read this. John chapter 2, verse 5. Say, his mother said unto the servant, his mother, my Jesus' mother, his mother said unto the servant, whatsoever he said unto you, do it. Okay, you must understand, that's the lordship of Christ. That denotes his lordship. 
okay? And it's for all of us. That Them two words right there, okay? Do the, 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 the words right there, okay? Whatsoever he said uh, unto you, do it. Those are divinely inspired. And we more to take the most earnest heed to those things when we when we read the gospels throughout the Bible. Okay, God, even when we read the scriptures there and the epistles there, they are divinely inspired by God. And God wants us to walk in obedience in accordance to that. You can't do that and go back into the New Test Old Testament, my Hebrew friends, picking up those uh trying to pick up those law statutes and commandments God gave these these these, these, these Hebrews. Back in the day, they nullified. The Lord Jesus probably nullified those things when he came on the scene, guys. Okay, and let, let, let's get another one here. Over here in, in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 8, verse 4 and eight, four through 8. Let's, let's look at something here also. We're just getting an idea when we look away from the Hebrew names of God, start looking at the meaning of them, what they mean. We know that they, they mean certain things, and we're talking about, really, we're talking about the Lordship of Christ today. That's really because we're we going to stay in the New Testament. And let's look at some here. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and, and, and came to Samuel to Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Uh, no, make us a king. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the, but, but, but the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord, and the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, and all that they say unto, the, unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should reign over them. Okay, and you, you get an idea, you see that guy, and they did that during the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they rejected him, they rejected the Father. To, and so why, why, why would God even have his names out there that mean the lordship, his his lordship and rulership, uh, and, you know, and his, uh, you know, and his sovereignty and different things like that. Him being God Almighty, and all of that. Why would God even leave those names? When he closed the door on all of the temple destroyer, these guys marched out. They left. They didn't take all their books and writing with them. They scattered them out in the four corners of the world. Okay, guys. Some of them had, had, didn't get it. They definitely didn't live to go back. Okay, and some of them pretty much forgot who they were. Okay, and different things like that. Some of them kept their culture. Oh, that them, them uh, Ethiopian Jews and stuff like that. You got Ethiopian Jews over there in the land of Israel today. Do they accept Christ? I don't know that. I, I hadn't got into that, stuff like that. But they brought those guys back. But, you know, when you look at it, you don't hear a lot of talk about them Ethiopian Jews and a lot of Jews of color over there in Israel today. You don't see these guys. Uh... You don't see them being talked about. They put them in different neighborhoods and stuff like that. They don't. You don't see them. They're not really represented. And about five, six years ago, the, the president of Israel over there apologized to these guys for for them being mistreated and being uh, discriminated against. Okay, he he apologized to them because they was they started marching over there. They started complaining. They started doing marching because they were being mistreated. Okay, we're talking about Jews of color over there. Black ones and different ones like the Negro skin and Jews over there was upset because they so-called sisters and brothers over there were mistreating them and doing them in a kind of way. So they got an apology for that, what they got behind it and all of that. It's kind of hard to say because you, you don't see you don't see them over there. That they, they're, not, they're not represented. Okay, you don't see their face over there. You see Israel being talked about all the time. You don't see these guys over there. I don't know how many of them got killed over there. What happened? You don't hear them being talked about over there in the land of Israel, stuff like that. I see a guy do a whole, sometimes I see a guy with this little old GoPro crown on his head, GoPro cam on his head or whatever. He walked through the city of Jerusalem for an hour and something. You have many of them you see over there, even and when you look at the camera over there and see this guy walk through the city of Jerusalem. How many do you see over there and different things like that? You don't see them. Okay, guys. But anyway, <clears throat> let's keep going. They they didn't want God to be king over them and rule over them, okay, anymore. He didn't want that. God was upset about it. But he he allowed them to get because he knew, I mean, he got to know the end from the beginning. People, he knew everything that was going to befall these people when they got Samuel and stuff like that. He knew what was going to happen to Samuel. He allowed it to happen. But and God don't act on that wise when he do know these things. He allowed it to play out. He don't he don't prejudge or do things like that. 
And let's go to John chapter four, verse fourteen. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep going, guys. This may be my last video. And I'm gonna try to hurry up on this one here, and I'm, I'm gonna go to something else. I'm gonna be coming back to these Hebrew talking about the Hebrew Israelites, but I got some videos, guys. I want to do. I want to do some on the Antichrist. Okay, I might do something on that. I might want. I got some mess on my mind. I'm thinking about doing. I also, okay, people <clears throat> that I want to do too. So I might come back in a few videos. I might want to do a few videos and I come back and do another video talk about disproving this bully black Hebrews Israelites with another segment or a different topic. Okay, guys, <clears throat> John chapter 4, verse 14 through 19. Let's, let's look at something here. Uh, it said, After what Jesus found him, him in the temple and said to him, Behold, thou art made. Uh, let me make sure I got the right one. Sometime I can. Let me go ahead. After Jesus found him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, at least a worse thing come unto thee. Then the man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole, and therefore did the Jews uh, persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Okay, guys, I'm going to keep going. But Jesus answered them, My father work of here unto, and, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only did he, had he only excuse me more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath but he said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily I say unto you, the son can do nothing himself that he said the father do, for whatsoever whatsoever he do, these also the father do so likewise. <clears throat> and let me look at some guys. Uh let me look at some here. I read it in a way, but I, I think I still might have a wrong one here. I wrote down a number of scriptures here. You had to bear with me. Sometimes I can get kind of thrown off a little bit. <clears throat> see, 14.36. Bear with me for a minute. Uh, and I'm going to keep moving, guys. Excuse me. I'm going to keep moving to the next one here. Uh, I, that, that really ain't what I was looking for, people. That ain't really what I was looking for. I'm going to move on. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 21. Let, let me look at something here, guys. It said, he that have, said, he that uh, have my commandments and keep with them, he it is that loveth me, and that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. What he's talking about there, people, he's talking about his lordship, being obedient to him and keeping his commandments. I know he's got a lot of time about we keep the law, statutes, commandments of God. That ain't what we're looking back at in the Old Testament. We're looking at the lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we call him Lord. We don't call it no because it, it can have some connection to something Hebrew. Okay, guy, and, and it was and, and the word law was, was removed and stuff like that. That ain't that ain't that ain't what we're looking at today. When we look at that Lord over there in the New Testament, we looking at his lordship and rulership. These guys said they wouldn't have Jesus to rule over them. Expressing his lordship and his rulership and him being master. Okay, and different things like that. That's what the scripture is. That's what the scripture is pointing at today, my friend. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and let me let's let's go back and let, let me go ahead and Matthew chapter four, guys. Let's look at something. Let's look at something over here. It said, but he said, uh, but he answered and said, if it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. You hear that guy? I told you that early. But every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, okay, guys, and we get a when we see that we get all caps there, guys. It's, it's talking about it, it, it's pouring back at a Hebrew name, okay, with this all caps right here. It's pouring back at a Hebrew name or Yahweh or Yah, things like that. Uh, but when we see it, we still see it over here talking about the God Almighty, okay, people. It's talking about God Almighty. And, and it's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Okay, people, it's got that that's the, it's talking about him also. We don't live by bread alone. He's that bread. We're going to live by every word the Lord Jesus Christ give us and command us. 
and inspire these guys to even write uh, later on when they wrote these epistles down, when they wrote them down, when they wrote they when they wrote their account down by by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, people. Okay, and I'm going to Luke chapter four verse eight. We go to Luke uh, four verse eight. Uh, it says, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind uh, me, say, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. <clears throat> okay, you hear that, people? That's what we God is calling us to do. Okay, people. Uh, and I'm and, and again, I'm not looking back at the Hebrew name. We looking at what God, the the, the, the Holy Spirit. Get, when you get in the New Testament, even throughout the Bible. You get you get an idea who this God, uh, what we're talking about. We're not just looking at the Hebrew name. We get an idea when we go back in the beginning. We said in the Bible, in the Bible where it said God and God created and God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, guys, and different things like that. And God created everything. Okay, He on the earth. He created man, and we we get an idea when we see that people. We don't we don't when we look at it. The Holy Spirit don't even get a for the Holy Spirit don't give you an understanding that is even alluding to this was a Hebrew name of God. We look at it in all caps here and stuff like that. And it's to be reverence and different things like that. God is God to give us that by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Don't give us that. Do you have people that come up later on and start to talk about what well, these both be Hebrew name? And that's the Hebrew name of God where they were removed and this name was put in its place and they trying to hide God and all that. Like God is powerless to to uh preserve his name. Anyway, I gotta keep going here, guys. Acts chapter five. Uh let's look at something. Acts chapter five, verse 30 through 32. Let's let's look at something here. It said, said the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and, and hanged on a tree. Him have God exalted with the right hand to be the prince and to be prince and savior. You hear that, people? Uh, for God repent for for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Okay, and we are witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God have given to them that obey Him. Okay, you hear that, guy? You you must be obedient to God to have His Spirit, and that ain't just talking about where we obey the law. You looking back, and we we not even in the old. We not even looking back. We don't look at the Old Testament covenants today. That don't bring eternal life to the day. Okay, that only show you where you're wrong at, and you're selling different things like because you're not keeping them. So we had to look ahead uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we look today. We are looking at Him, looking at His finished work. Different things like that. We're not looking back at he lost that using commandments. Okay, we look back, we look at back, we look back at the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That came with humiliation, shame, and, and uh death and different things like that. Okay, Peter, that's what we look at. Okay, we 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 go look at that. Okay, Christ says, Many as you as often as you do to do this in remembrance of me. Okay, and they were gonna have something to remember too when they were when sitting at the table communion. And he said, I'll let you eat this bread and drink this wine. You, you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And they said, okay, we will. They had, they really didn't have a good clue what he was about to suffer and go through. So when they, when, when they had something to remember, when they think back at his, his, his death, burial, and, and resurrection, when they think back at his death, what he suffered, they got something to remember, people. They seen it with their own eyes. They see how marred his body was. And different things like that when they put him up on the up on the cross so everybody can see him behold him they see how marred and different things like that he was and people railed on him and wagged their finger at him they pierced him in the side and different things like that after they put him up on the cross and how he had the crown of thorns on the head and beard was plucked with their hand they pulled his beard out with their hand stuff like that okay people that's why people my friend that's why when we get to the old testament I'm telling you, you Hebrew Israelites, this thing is not about you when we get when we start to look at Old Testament covenants and different things like this. It's all about the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, I expressed all this in the other videos. And I'm, I'm really a simple-minded guy. I'm not all that smart, my friend. I, I don't really know a whole lot about how to express these things about these Hebrew names and all of that. 
Okay, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have no shame about that. I know what I'm doing here sitting at my desk. Okay, and I know what God is calling for today. This thing is centered around the Lord Jesus Christ. Go read the old, go read the, the book of Revelation. It only mentions you guys one place is talking about the 12 tribes and stuff like that. It does mention you guys again over there in Revelation chapter 12, talking about you guys going to have the woman going to, have to, going to have to flee up into the land, up into the mountains and stuff like that. Okay, it, it, you know, Christ is talking, this is about Christ, okay, being revealed from heaven and different things like that in the flame of fire. He's talking, he's giving reverence to that, he's talking about the Antichrist that's going to persecute the whole world. Okay, you know, it's not just so much as talking about the Hebrews and things like that. God going, you know, that restoration, we talked about that over in the Old Testament, what God going to do with these guys and bring them in the land and all of that. Okay, they are meeting. But it ain't about you guys in the New Testament, my friend. It's about both Jew and Gentile and, uh, and the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me keep going. Uh, Titus chapter 2, verse 13. Is it looking for the blessed hope? You hear that people in the glorious appearing of the great God. You hear, you hear me, God? And our Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, he's that great God and Savior today. Jesus Christ. That's what we look at. We see the term God in the Bible, in the New Testament, even in the Old Testament. You want to come up with a name, my friend. You come up with the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, that's what he's talking about. The fullness of the Godhead is in him. He's the manifestation of the Godhead. When the Godhead is manifested, okay, the, 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 the Father and the Spirit is manifested through the Lord Jesus Christ today. Okay, that's why he put anything out. He didn't, it, it's all in his hands today, people. Okay, he gets to decide, okay, who gets saved and who don't. He has the keys. Of, he, when he came, he had the keys to eternal life and he, heaven and hell and different things like that. Okay, he have it today. He gave, us, uh, he, he gave it to Peter, which was the gospel on how to be saved and how to forgiveness of sins. Okay, and those that refuse that, they have, they have condemnation come behind that. Okay, the scripture says that. So he has the keys to death and hell. Okay, death and hell. He has the keys to that. He has the keys to heaven also. You can have the gospel and be saved and have eternal life in the Lord Jesus Christ. When the life all with you go to heaven. Okay, and then the saints go back and forth to heaven during the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. We get to go back and forth to heaven. We're not just going to stay here on earth. Uh, you know, for a thousand years, we'll have an opportunity to go back and forth to heaven. We ruling with ruling reign with Christ here on earth, though. But we have an opportunity to go back and forth with heaven, like the angels do. Okay, guys, and, and so we 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 talking about that blessed hope, and it didn't talk about it. it didn't give us a Hebrew name when it when it, when it didn't know that didn't know that Jesus did this God or the great God and Savior. Okay, people, it called him. It told him. It, it said he's the great God. Okay, God and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay, people don't it don't it don't it don't give us a Hebrew name right there. It didn't have to be sacred. It don't have Jesus not hid from anybody today. You want all men to be saved. Won't hear hide his name. Not hiding his name. Not hiding him in, in his finished work and in his character and his nature and different things like that. His humility. We all need to know that and reverence that. Okay, God, go on to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 through 15. That and uh, uh, let me let me go over something. I'm saying, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, okay, in which the heavens shall be shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and there also shall and the works that, uh, that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought y'all to be in all holiness, conversation, and godliness, okay? Looking for and hastening until the coming of the day of God, and wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall be melt with fervent heat. Okay, God, and you when I talk about, you know, talk about flat earth or something like that, and we live on a, you know, we living on the dome and stuff like that, glass ceiling. I use the scripture here anyway, because it's gonna be God gonna do away with that. Okay, people, you do away with that. Nevertheless, according to His promise, we look for new heavens and new earth, wherein the well of righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, that ye that uh, such things be diligent, that ye may be found up of him in peace without spot and blameless. Okay, guys, I'm gonna keep moving here. 
And the count of the long suffering of the Lord is salvation. Okay, you see that, guys? The long suffering of the Lord, you hear that, people? Is salvation. Okay, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Even as our beloved brother, Paul, according to his, to, according to the wisdom of given unto him, help written unto you. Okay, guys, when we see these words in the Bible, when we get to the New Testament, we see these words, Lord, in the Bible. It's, it's going to be talking about the Lord Jesus Christ all the time. The New Testament is centered around him, centered around the Father, too. No question about it. God gave his only begotten Son. We see that. Oh, then John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world. When we see that term, Lord, today, the Holy Spirit, when we read, I read scriptures in the last video talking about the Holy Spirit when it comes, we're going to testify to the Lord Jesus, bring things back to remembrance and all of that. It testify him, so it's all about him. It didn't say it was going to testify about the Father and things like that. We have the Father and we have Christ. When we have Christ, we have the Father and we have the Holy Spirit also. But this thing is centered around the Lord Jesus Christ today, people. He done made our salvation perfect through suffering. He done made the captive of our salvation perfect through suffering today. And humiliation, shame, and death and things like that. And obedience. Okay, people. So that's why we, when we get to the New Testament, we don't rail on by Hebrew names, knowing the Hebrew names of God and talk about that and using Hebrew names and all that, of Jesus and all. That ain't what it's about. That ain't what you're getting, people. You got your testimony got to be about the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what you're talking about. That's what you're proclaiming, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that saved lost sinners and calling people into the kingdom and come proclaiming the kingdom, coming kingdom of God. And it's on the, it'll be here shortly, guys. But before that, there's going to be a lot of chaos and destruction and death happening in the world today. Uh, and account that the long suffering of the Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you. That wisdom was given unto him. He didn't find it out. Okay, God give him that. Okay, people, you guys don't, you know, I mean, I don't understand where you guys getting your stuff from. A lot of it off the internet. Okay, people, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stop right there, guys. I'm going to keep going. I, I got I got some more scriptures here. I'm going to stop right there then. First, a scripture there, and we'll, we'll keep going here, guys. You know, we, we'll look at this thing because actually, what we're doing is we we looking at we, we looking at <clears throat> not just getting an idea about the Hebrew name. We understand that there's no they're not relevant today for use today. So when we see those names in the Bible, we see them in the, when we see these the name God and, and Jesus and Lord and Christ. And different things like that, and Holy Spirit, and all of that. We we see that we're not relegating it to a Hebrew name. We're relegating it to what it means. Okay, and the operation of it, like the Holy Spirit, is there to do certain things. Okay, we don't have to just we just relegate we just we just relegate relegated over there to a Hebrew uh, word or a name, and that's it. Not look at the power that come behind it. Okay, guys, when you see the Holy Spirit, you shall receive power. Okay, it's the comfort to, it's to comfort you, it's to bring those things, it brings scriptures back to your remembrance that you've read in different things, what you've been taught, and you remember those scriptures going through different things, and you've been comforted by certain things in your life. I mean, you've been comforted with the Holy Spirit because he brings certain things back to your memory, let you, he lets you know. And it's there to convict you of your sins and different things like that. Also, God, if you say, you spirit feel you in sin, you walking outside God's will and outside the line. Well, the Holy Spirit there to convict you, first of all. You're not obedient to God. We're chasing you, people. And for those that are not saved, the Holy Spirit there to convict you of your sins. They let you see that you done broke God's laws. Okay, the moral law. Okay, all the commandments and things like the, the statute, the, the Ten Commandments, the moral law, the ten, the ten Commandments. You broke that, and you need forgiveness of sin. God don't ask you to put up a sacrifice, go sacrifice animals and different things like that. Okay, people, he, he asked you to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, repent of your sin, return, and turn to him. And after that, forsake your sins. Okay, God, and stuff like that, and be obedient to God's word, and God will fill you with his spirit. That's what, that's what God is calling for today, and that should be the message of these Hebrew Israelites today. Anyone that's preaching the gospel and in church, and different things like that, and surrounded by Christianity, okay, that's the gospel that should be preached and different things like that. Okay, preaching Christ. Okay, Christ, the Bible said, let no man spoil you on the things of this world, not on Christ. Okay, guys, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, 
And it said, but you, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost uh, has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria, Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. And, and that's the evidence that the Hebrews are like, so not sick, are they not being witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ? They saying they got the, the Holy Spirit, the, uh, the, the, the uh, I can't pronounce the, the Hebrew name right now. Uh, what they call the rock, Kadesh and stuff like that, the Holy Spirit, the Hebrew name of the Holy Spirit. Okay, people, just because you know the Hebrew name of the Holy Spirit, that don't mean you have it. Okay, people, and that don't mean it's going to work for you just because you use the Hebrew name of it. Okay, guy, I mean, that's foolishness. Okay, you got you to gotta come in the right way. And we see that in the Bible. Okay, you got a lot of these guys been brainwashed, people. Okay, these really Hebrew Israelites have been brainwashed, and that's why they one dimensional and shadow minded. Okay, guys, they 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 one dimensional. Okay, people, they only can think in one way, and it, that's why everything got to be in their favor and they liking and stuff like that. You can't tell them anything that don't you don't make sense to them. Okay, people, and we can clearly make sense that we just simply read the Bible. We simply read the Bible. Must be saved and spirit filled first. Got to have a spirit. Okay. And you, and you need a KJV Bible. Okay. And if you got both of those, okay, and you desire the truth, okay, and you and you need that wisdom and understanding, God give it to you. You get to reading the Bible, people. But you got to desire the truth also. You got to want it. Even the Bible said, buy the truth. If you have to buy it, buy it and sell it not. Okay. And you just share it with other people. Okay, guys. You don't have to, you don't, you, you don't sell it. You don't get rid of it. You keep the truth. Okay, but you share it with other people, though. You share the truth with them. And that's what I call myself. That's what I do in these videos. All right, anyway, let's keep going here. Uh, you, but, you shall have, but, but you shall receive power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witness unto me. This is Jesus talking. Uh, unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria. Okay, in the other most parts of the earth. Okay, talking about all Israel, Jerusalem, and all of that. You're supposed to be witnesses unto him. Okay, in the, in, in the other most parts of the earth, talking about Jew and Gentile, they wouldn't really know that to Both Jew and Gentile, okay, going to be witnesses unto him when they get the Holy Spirit. Okay, and so that's the evidence of individual not even saved when they're not witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ. It testify of him. And I'm going to keep going here, guys. I got to keep going. I, I need to, I need to, you know, I got to speed up. I'm on, I'm on track, okay, and I may turn up the heat a little bit, but we're talking about obedience and what the, what we're looking at today. We ain't looking at the Hebrew names like that. We're looking at the meaning of the name and what God is calling the saints to obedience and different things like that. And the idea of when you're saving spirit filled, what kind of fruit you're bearing, what is testing, and who is testifying, I ain't testifying of a Hebrew name. That ain't the evidence you say because you can use the Hebrew names of God. People, that's easy. Okay, I mean the Hebrew names of God in on the internet. You can find all the information now, the Hebrew names, the different ones they have today that they that they, they put together today and stuff like that, put a meaning behind them, what the what it means and stuff. We have that today. You can have that, but I'm not gonna play the same. I'm not playing ball with you guys. Okay, I'm not playing ball with you guys like that. Okay, guys, I'm gonna play ball the way that God outlined it for us in the Bible and what we see. And the definition of that word, in the, the word God in the Bible has many definitions in it. When we see it in capital letters or in capital G. And the word Jesus, Lord, and Christ, and Holy Spirit, and all those words there. Uh, they have they have their own meanings in the Bible today. And the Holy Spirit show you how to operate. Because I want you to be obedient to God's word and things like that. Now, looking back at the law, statutes, and commandments, and the Sabbath, and all of that. We understand that the Sabbath rest is in the Lord Jesus today. Okay, guy, and those Sabbaths will be brought back uh, later on. Okay, during the millennial reign of Lord Jesus Christ, the world gonna have a setting. I'm gonna be careful for nothing during that time period. You no know, poor people gonna be on earth. Okay, people gonna be poor people gonna have to work continuously and all of that. You just be obedient to God's word, and you'll 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 multiply. You'll have increase during that time period. Uh, Jeremiah chapter seventeen verse nine. People, it said, "The heart deceitful above all things and desperately wicked." Who can know it? You Hebrew Israelites, you saved and unsaved people look at my videos talking to all of us. You must try to know your heart all the time. If you're not saved, if you're not saving spirit field, this is close to impossible of knowing your heart, knowing your true intentions of why you do certain things. 
or why you say certain things. And that's how you, these guys got mixed up in these, this occult religion today, okay, because they, they hard to deceive them, okay? And even when you save and spirit feel, okay, guys, you got to know your heart because it can, it, it can be like that. So you got to try your heart, see what your re real reason why you do certain things yourself. And if you save and spirit feel, the Holy Spirit will show you, it will. That's what it's for, to show you that. So you can know and your heart and, and understand the scripture here because you have the Holy Spirit allows you to do that. He told you to be careful about that thing because you can be deceived. You can deceive your own self, people. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 6 through 13. We'll look at that. It said, it said but thou when thou prayest, and until thou closest, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father, which is in secret. You hear that guy? Pray to the Father now. Okay, that's that's one of the reasons why we don't have to use the Hebrew names of God. We don't pray, you know, El Shaddai and, and Adonai and, and Yahshua. And we don't use the names like that, Yashara and uh which is uh the which is Israel. Uh uh this other Hebrew name, Yehoshua. Okay, people. Uh in the other name of God, and different things like that. We don't pray them names like that, people. We don't pray them names like that. They don't earn you no favor with God. They're called using these names. They're not even real Hebrew names. They're not even using Hebrew language in, in their dialect and tongue that they're using. Okay, people? Okay, I mean, I mean, you're just not doing it. using English words. And, 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 and the translator gave to them, like I said in the last video, English language is one of the most corrupt languages you can have. It is. Okay, people? So we, we just use what God has. He know what you mean and things like that. Uh, let, let, let me get back here. 7, Matthew 6. Uh, 6 uh, through 13. Uh, and I go back. I said, but but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which which see if in, which is in secret, and thy father which see if in secret shall reward thee openly. Okay, guys, he reward you openly, and let's keep going. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they uh, think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Okay, guys, and some of these guys feel like that today uh, when they use the Hebrew names of God. That's vain to him today, people. He know his name. Gonna have some new names later, different things like that. Uh, after this matter, therefore pray ye our Father. Okay, guys, I'm not gonna keep going. I'm not gonna keep. I'm not gonna read all that I did that earlier. When I, when you pray, pray our Father, because that's the know that you're part of the household of God. You're part of the family of God. God, God uh, has sent the Spirit to your heart, crying, "Our Father." You His Son now. You His daughter. People, that's how your prayers get answered. Now Jesus is telling you how to pray. Okay, and we end the prayer with Amen. And some say that's the name of a god, the Egyptian god, uh, what they call Amorite, all that, you know, different things like that. In the Bible, that word mean when we say amen, that means so be it, or let it be done, different things like that. Okay, so be it. That's what the word mean. It don't go, it is not the name of some Egyptian god or whatever they want to call him, stuff like that. Okay, God, don't look at it like that. Okay, stay close to the Bible. Yeah, that's why that's why I, said I call myself a Bible believing, fundamental, narrow minded Christian. I'm just gonna stay in the Bible. It's good to do that. Okay, people, you can't miss when you do. Okay, guys, and let me keep going here. I, let me keep going. Uh let me go over here and look at some people. Uh Psalms chapter 103. Uh it said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Okay, God. And I think I had that in my last video. Bless his holy name, God. His, his name. We, we under, you know, and, and that's one of the few scriptures that talking about blessing his holy name. He has a holy name, but God, but these guys use the holy name. And they pollute his holy name by the works that they was doing. And they polluted the holy temple by what they was bringing in the temple also. Okay, and so these guys did a non-bondable thing. God marched them off into captivity and different things like that. And, you know, they, they lose a lot of heritage when they go into captivity for 70 years. They lose a lot of heritage, people. 
Okay, guys, they come back. And during the time of the Lord Jesus Christ, this guy was pretty much was speaking Aramaic. Okay, Hebrews were left to speak to he, to these, these Pharisees and Sadducees and, and your, your, your elders and different one in Israel, once the high class was speaking more Hebrew language back then. Okay, guy, guy, uh, I, I mean, I already made that, I already developed that in another video. And the Lord Jesus Christ knew to speak, he knew how to speak all and he understood all things, God in the flesh. He could speak Hebrew. There ain't no question about that. But we believe he spoke more Aramaic, common language. People understood that. Okay, guys, things like that. Uh, anyway, I mean, you know, you, you know, the Romans had a language too. They spoke, and they had, you had to understand, they had, to, they had a number of languages that they understood that they had to learn people. Okay, guys, because these, you know, the Romans was, they was under occupation of Rome during the time of the Lord Jesus. Okay, guys, and let, let, let me, uh, let me continue on. Let me see where I'm at here. I got a few of them we want to look at, guys. We, let, me, let me look at, let me look at my notes here and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, the bear with, I, I I put together a number of things, guys. I'm gonna try to finish up. It might go over. I'm gonna, I want to try to finish up this study right here. I'm moving on, and, I, and 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 for you guys that are looking at the video this long, just coming back to look at some more of the video. I'm simply just trying to let show you guys that the Hebrew names of God are not relevant today. We look at more of the title, what, what the name means today. We see it over here in the Bible. We see Lord and Jesus and Christ and God and all, even the Holy Spirit. We look at the meaning of the word, and God wants us to be obedient to that today. Okay, God, that's what it, what, that's what God is doing today in the new covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants him to be your Lord and your God today, people, and your Savior. Okay, he wants to rule over you, okay, and to be the head of your life. Okay, God, and that's what God is calling for today. He's not looking back at the Hebrew names and reeling and and. and and putting a lot of emphasis on them and talking about them every time you make videos and different things like that. It's talking about their finished work and his and what he suffered. And that's what he wanted to look us to look back on it. Okay, guys, and, and, and think about how you gonna uh how you gonna have to bear his reproach also. He bared your reproach, people. Okay, he bared your reproach because God wanted to put you to death for your sins and different things like that. God commanded that the scripture said, okay, for the way of sin is death. Okay, God, God commanded you be put to death for that. You had to die for your sins, people. Okay, that's the reproach on you. Your sins is a reproach to you. But the Lord, but the, your, your, the reproach of you fell on him. Okay, fell on the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, people, he died, he died for our sins. He paid for the sins of the world today. We can have forgiveness for our sins through the Lord Jesus Christ. If we fail to uh, do that, if we fail to forgiveness of if we fail to forget to get the forgiveness of sins through Jesus Christ, we pay for our own sins in the lake in the lake of fire and brimstone. We had to go to hell for our own sins if we don't forget forgiveness for those sins. Okay, just that simple, people. Okay, I don't have to say it like an intellect. I'm just letting you know. You don't forget forgiveness of sin if you don't truly accept the Lord Jesus Christ the way the Bible calls you to do it today, people. You are still in your sin. You walk, you back in Old Testament practices and covenants and all that. You don't fall in from grace. You're not even saved, guys. And I would be very concerned about that. I would be very concerned about that. Okay, God, God wants you to look back at those the Ten Commandments He gave us. We to look at those things. Yeah, when we see where it said God wants to, to eat blood and different things like that, we know that. Okay, for eating pork, uh, we're gonna eat pork. Okay, God, I can't say I don't eat pork. Okay, I eat pork. I may not eat bacon. I don't eat bacon like that and stuff like that, but I eat sausages and different other things. Okay, guys, I'm going to pray over that stuff. I'm going to sanctify in prayer. Okay, guys, and I do have some more videos. I do have some more scriptures, really, to give you guys concerning scriptures like that. They show you that we're free from all of that. We can do those things. Okay, people? But anyway, I got to keep going here, guys. Matthew 21, 15, and 16. Nope. No, I'm ahead of getting ahead of myself. Let me go to um, let me go to First Corinthians chapter uh, one, verse twenty six through twenty nine. Let's look at a few things here, guys. I want to get in, get back into this. 
uh, chapter 1, verse 26 through 29. It says, For you see a calling, brother, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. For God have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And we're talking about those things that confound the foolish things of the world. We're talking about being, it's really talking about him being called the name God in the Bible. Okay, he allowed that. Okay, he allowed the, the name Lord and Jesus and Christ and Holy Spirit to be used. Okay, for us to be called Christians and the term we use a Christian. And God chose all of that. Okay, people, that's you got to understand that. Okay, that's what it's talking about. It seems foolish to you. Okay, and God let the laugh is on you. When he used that term, God told the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. You guys are the wise that he's talking about right there in the scripture there. Okay, for you see your calling, brother, how not many wise men after the flesh. Okay, you see that? Not many mighty men, uh, not many mighty, not uh, not many noble are called. Okay, guys, it's talking to you guys in the intellectual types also. Think they so smart. God ain't calling these guys. For God have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. The foolish things of the world. Not that it's some foolishness going on in the world, but the foolish things of the world talking about the, the, the Christianity, what you think is foolish. And we using the, the English names of God and Jesus and stuff like what you think is foolish. God, them things are foolish to you in the world that you live in. God chose those things. Okay, for God have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God have chosen the weak things that were things that you see weak and all that. God chosen those things, guys. He's chosen that. Okay. He that's what he chose. Okay. Which things uh God have chosen, chosen, excuse me, people, and God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Okay, you hear me? The weak, the things that are mighty, the things you the, the things that the world says are mighty today, God chosen the weak thing. And the thing that you see why uh mighty, my Hebrew friend, God chosen the weak thing. He weak the, he chose things that are weak, that look weak to you in the world. Those are things God have chosen now. Okay, those are things that God have chosen. All right. And so God, God, God choose these things that you think are foolish. Okay, and he 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 allowed the Hebrew names stuff like that, and holy and sacred names. They, I mean, they wasn't they wasn't that he didn't he didn't cause to translate to put them in the Bible in the KJV Bible we have today, in this Bible we have today. Okay, guys. I mean, they not hid from you guys. You can go get them and use them, but okay. But don't be making video talking about they hid and all that. Like God is powerless to do anything. We just believe that we have a divinely inspired Bible today, a KJV Bible. We not. I don't, we're not doing that because it's the white man, it's in, it's in the King James format, it's English Bible, European English and stuff like that, and it belongs to the white man, and you know, that ain't why we had the Bible like that, we have because it's divinely inspired by God, these guys had the Bible translated, different things like that, print and press out, that these guys use and stuff like that, and get the Bible out in the Old New Testament, and God, it was divinely inspired, God went to work, God put these guys to work on giving us old and new testament i know some say well 80 books in the bible and they took out 14 of them okay well those those books are wasn't the pretty much divinely inspired a god didn't want them in the canon of scriptures in the bible today that we have today so they leave them out you want to read them go read them i don't read them i have no use and desire for them the holy spirit do not I, for, for the past 20 some years i've been saved i never had the desire to read that those those missing books out the Bible, you said missing out the Bible. I don't get into that, okay, guys. But anyway, let me keep going because it's very important that I read this, what I'm about to get into, okay, guys. Said said base things of the world, and things which are despised have God chosen, yea, things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. Okay, I've opened that up before. I'm not getting too far into that, okay. That no flesh. That's what I'm getting to here. This is what I'm getting to, okay. That no flesh should glory in His presence. Okay, uh, but of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification uh, and redemption, that according to his read, he did glory. You hear this, people? You hear this now? Let him, uh, that, uh, that according to his read, he did glory. Let him glory in the Lord. Okay, my friends, so when we, see, these names glory, they glory in the use of the Hebrew names, and different things like that that they use. Let's be real. Okay, people, they glory in the Hebrew names of God and terminology that they use. That's what they glory in. They're not glorying in the Lord Jesus Christ 
and his finished work people on the cross for us. And I'm, I, I can be repetitive about that. I can repeat that. I can talk about that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to talk about the death, burial, and resurrection and ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ and him sending back the Holy Spirit. And we have it today. We, we had a power today. We had that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that the Holy Spirit, Spirit give us, not the wisdom of this world and that intellect, wisdom, and, and different things like that that you get from the world and books today. Books. Okay? Okay, plural. We don't, we don't do that. We don't have to go off into that. We get a KJV Bible. We get to read, and we'll get an understanding that we read throughout the Bible. Holy Spirit, give us just understanding about it. Okay? If you desire, if you may desire something extra, yeah, you can go get on the internet and find it, but make sure it don't lead you astray because there's a lot of false truths out there, different things like that, people. So we don't glory in, uh, we don't glory in man and our intellect and our knowledge and different things like that. We're glorying what God gives us the glory in. And today, my friend, you Hebrews are like God, you're supposed to be glorying in the things of the Lord Jesus Christ today. You're supposed to be spoiling people on Christ. Okay, guys, and, and being staying fundamental, narrow-minded, about your faith and belief in what we have in the Bible here. So God don't want us to glory and stuff like that. And let's go look at another one here. And, 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 and let's look again here. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 18 through 33. I know it's a long one, but I got to read it, people. I'm going to try to finish up. I don't have to make two hours or something. That's how it's going to be in this last study I'm doing here. Okay, guys, in this last one I'm doing. Okay, people, it says, uh, seeing, seeing that men in glory after the flesh, this is very important, people. You get an idea if you must glory. You got, you got, Paul gonna give you an idea what you must glory in. Okay, and it won't be the Hebrew names, people. Okay, my friend. It won't be the Hebrew names. I'm, I'm sure, I hope you guys, I hope somebody listening to me. And if you're not, that's okay. I put this thing on the video and I, put, and I upload it and I move on to another study. Okay, I have other stuff to do. It's on the video. That's my that's my lesson, and that's what I'm supposed to do. Okay, guys, but but if you go glory, you don't glory in the Hebrew names and different things like that. Okay, people, we're not doing that. Okay, as we move away from the names and meanings and all that. We okay, yeah, we know that. Okay, I got it here, my I got it here my on my desk. Okay, I got it here, but I, I, it take up too much time to keep going back and forth about the Hebrew name, reading them all, sharing them with you, talking about, I can't, I don't, I don't, I don't base my, 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 uh, my, my, my religion on stuff like that. I don't waste, I don't do that. There's a lot to do in Christianity, a lot to study, a lot of things that we supposed to be taking mind, being mindful about, being prepared for every, anything we need to do and stuff like that. We need a lot of teaching, a lot of reading. We, we, we trying to come into the manifold wisdom and understanding of God. And there's, you know, there's some 31,102 scriptures in the Bible. And you got to read them. You still can't understand not even half of them. Because it's, the, it's, the, it's, the it's, it's divinely inspired by God. So you can't understand these things. Then they have more than two-fold meaning of context that you can put it in and it, it, that it don't go out of the context that it was intended for. Okay, we can see it there. Okay, you know, so you have you use these things on different wise and understanding people. That's what I'll be talking about. That's what I talked about in the last video when I use that term why. Okay, you know how to use it in different context, and different terms. Anyway, I must go on. I must keep going here. It said, and this is very important what I'm about to read. A lot of this is very important if you're gonna glory, because that's what you guys do. Okay, my friend, I got a guy come in my comment section. I did uh, the other night, last night, talking about, the, talking about give him the Hebrew names of God if I know him. Yeah, I know the Hebrew names. They're easy to find. I don't have to give them to you, though, unless I give the ones in the Bible. Okay, I'm not subject to give you that. I'm not subject to do that. Okay, if I don't think it makes sense or it's relevant, that's why I'm making a video to show that it is not. Okay, but I understand these guys. You don't give you Hebrew English names. That, that suffice you. Okay, people, Hebrew English name that that suffice you you still are like you out of line bro okay i'm serious okay because that that is not that is not what is intended to be the hebrew english name you want a hebrew english name that's what you asked me to give you okay guys a hebrew english name okay uh anyway i'm gonna keep going here i mean you could come again i said what i had to say in my comments okay
seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. But listen how he going to do it, though, people. Okay, and it's an example for us also. Listen, for you suffer fools gladly, seeing you yourselves are wise. Okay, and this can be in two contexts. Paul is he could either he he Paul is either reprimanding these guys or he acknowledging their wisdom that they do have. Okay, guys, so we can look at it like that. But let's see what Paul Paul let's see what Paul is saying because the Holy Spirit is definitely at work, and we read this here. Because you had to look at, you know, if, you know, depending on where you stand is how you're going to look at this. And I'm going to go back and say, for you suffer fools gladly. And that's going to be good because we as Christians are supposed to suffer these guys. We're supposed to be long-suffering with these guys. Okay, we're supposed to, the Bible tells us to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Okay, to be watchful in all things, to prove all things, to judge nothing before the time. Okay, guys, so we can see that we, when we look at the scripture and what Paul is saying to these guys, and really he's talking good to these guys. So we see some two four here in a minute. He's talking good. He's not talking down on them. He's talking good, good to these guys. But let's look at it. Say, for you suffer fools gladly. Call them fools. So you suffer them gladly. That means he deal with them. They, he, he, they, they have patience with these guys. Okay, you suffer fools gladly, seeing yourselves are wise. Okay. For you suffer if a man bring you into bondage. You see that they suffer those things for the, for the sake of Christ, people. Okay, that's what that's what we mean by that. That's what we point now. Okay, guy, if they bring in the bondage for the for the sake of Christ, we ain't talking about for some other for a certain job that you weren't want or a certain in some materialistic thing or uh, you know some of that nature. There, we're not talking about stuff like that. We are talking about things of, of the kingdom of God in Christ. Okay, if a man bring you in the bond, if a man dis, uh, if a man, if a man, uh, I, I, excuse me, people, defraud you. I, I, I'm missing something here. Uh, if I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna go past that. I'm, I'm missing something here in my Bible here. Something that I. I don't. I have a problem with if a man uh, d something, but it ain't reading right right here. I'm in a KJV Bible now, but I keep going. If a man take, if a man take of you, if a man take of you, okay. If a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the faith, you see that guys and all these things that Paul said. These guys suffer this kind of stuff, okay, people. He they suffer this kind of stuff. They deal with it. They let people defraud them and misuse them and all that. They suffer fools, okay, gladly, okay, because it was all for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ, okay, guys, I, that's what I'm saying, I don't waste time with the Hebrew, now, I don't care to do this stuff, I just want to let you guys know that it wasn't relevant, and what we ought to be doing, if we're going to be on sitting behind a video talking, what we need to be talking about, okay, look at my line of videos that I do, list of videos, you get an idea what I do be talking about, okay, guys, all right, and let's go. Uh, I speak as concerning reproach. That's what Paul said, reproach. Okay, on day behavior, that's what he's saying. He's speaking at, He's speaking in the context of reproach, meaning being, these guys reproaching them for the sake of Christ because they're Christians. They're talking down on misusing and, and different things like that. That's what Paul, uh, Paul is saying. So I speak as concerning reproach as though we had been weak. How be it? What's, what, whensoever... In his bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. That for the sake of Christ. See, I'm gonna keep it in the right. I'm gonna keep it in the proper context. Okay, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they? Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Okay, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more and labor more abundant. Okay, you hit it. Now, what I'm about to read, all of this is for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ and what God has called us to also we have to be. It has nothing to do with Hebrew names and all that, but keep, let's keep going because it's very important that I read this. And labor is more abundant, okay, and, and strife is uh, above measure, and prison is more frequent, and death all. Oh, this was Paul went through himself for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ read that with Paul as he went through. He said, Paul, go through it. Okay, people, we, 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 uh, we, we, we glory, if we're going to glory in Paul, we glory in what Paul went through, his afflictions and things like that. And he said that himself. And let me keep going here because I, I'm pretty much, uh, you know, may not finish. I'm going to try. It might be a long video, but I mean, that's it. I know people don't like long videos. They don't 
tend to look at them a long time, but hey, I look at the video. I get a look at it, see what I'm saying, and stuff like that. I try to look at it really before I upload it. Sometimes I don't get a chance to do that. But anyway, let's keep going. Now, what I'm again, I'm making myself clear. What I'm reading about Paul, all this for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, that's what God is calling for. That's what you, you are, Hebrews I'd be talking about. And many Christians have went through the same thing in the past. For the past 2,000 years, the saints of the Lord Jesus Christ have went through that. Those that are going through it today, for the sake of Christ. Okay, and they'll be going through this in the near future. So those, those things that Paul go through and suffer for the sake of Christ, they go through that. And they and, and from their own country, man, you Hebrews, and different ones like they call you preaching the gospel. But this one's all the Jews. Ain't not read this is talking about the Jews. Uh, let's go back. Are the message of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labor, more abundant, and strikes above measure in prisons, more frequent in deaths often. Uh, of the Jews, five times received uh, for the strikes. Okay. Uh, and I keep going. I'm not going to open up that term off because it really, and they talking about in deaths off. Oh, that means that means some of his sisters and brothers in Christ. Okay. That thing bothered him also. Those guys had been martyred and was put to death and stuff like that. I can look at it like that. We can look at it like that. Okay. That term, that's what it means over there. Uh, of the Jews, five times received by four to strike. The Jews, okay, he said Hebrews. These guys were Hebrews, but they were Jews, though, because of what they, they religion, what they were practicing. Of the Jews, five times received by four to strike, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rod. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day have I been in the deep. In Jonas, all in pearls of war, in pearls of robbers, in pearls by my own countrymen. Okay, you hear that, guys? Oh, Hebrew, talking about the Hebrews. Uh, in pearls by the heathen, in pearls in the city, in pearls uh, in the wilderness, in pearls in the sea, in pearls among false brethren. Okay, some of you Hebrews, that we're talking about there. Some of you Hebrew Israelite guys, so to my you the church, so that means you false brethren to Paul. Okay, guy, and then he's talking about regular Christian people also. That's the false brethren he's talking about. You Hebrew Israelites, they claim to be the church also and the people of the book. Talking about you guys. And some of these lukewarm Christians and different one hypocritical Christians, these lukewarm Christians and stuff like they talking. That's what Paul talking about. So that's what we expect to suffer persecution from these guys like you and false Christians, different ones like that. Today, uh, excuse me, people. Let me drink me some water here. Been talking for a while. Got one sip of water. Uh, it said, in weariness, in, in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger, in thirst, in fashions often, in cold, in nakedness. Can you hear all of that, people? All that because his ministry, missionary journeys he went on, different things like that, his ministry, all for the sake of Christ. I don't know if none of you Hebrews ever likes to doing that. None of your elders that you guys call elders in different ones, they doing that? They been through stuff like that for the sake of the Messiah or the, the Hebrew Messiah you guys look to or the, you know, with the Hebrew name? Have any of your guys been through stuff like that? They tell for any kind of persecution for the sake of Christ? Tell me about it in the comment section down there, guys, if you look at the video this long. Okay, explain to me what you guys are doing and something for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. I need to know that. Don't be telling me what they hate because we have the truth and all of that. That's garbage. You don't have no truth. You don't have truth. You don't have truth. You don't operate in the right way. If you did, if you have truth, you operate the right way. Okay. Uh, besides those things that come up, that besides those things that are without that which come up upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Okay, that's what Paul was concerned about. Who is weak and I'm not weak. Who is offended and, and I burn not. Listen now, I'm. I said, if I must glory, if I must needs glory, I will glory of things which concern my infirmities. Okay, his infirmities that he got from the sufferings of Christ. That's what he was glad about. Okay, that's what he was, that's what, that's what he was excited about. If you're going to glory, he's going to glory in anything, glory according to his, the, his affirmities. Okay, listen now, uh, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forever, Forever more know that I lie not. Listen now, in Damascus, in Damascus, the governor 
under Arteas, the king kept the city of Damascus of the Damascus with a garrison of desires to apprehend me. And through a window and a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hand. Okay, guys. So Paul was really going through. So these guys really want to kill Paul. How many of you guys, they want to kill today, my friend? Okay, how many of you guys did they want to kill because of what you know? Your Hebrew names and all that stuff, you using a God. How many people want to do hurt you guys? I don't see no prophecy concerning that. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 5 through 11. It's of such, it says, of such in one I will glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. Okay, you hear that, people? Paul, Paul don't contradict himself. Okay, he don't come the scripture do not contradict Paul do not contradict himself. Okay, and put it like that. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth, but but now I for, for, forbear at least any man should think of me above that which he sees me, okay, to be uh or that he hear for me. Okay, God, uh at least I should be exalted above measure uh through the abundance of the revelations. Uh, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh and the message of Satan to buffet me. At least I should be exalted above measure. Okay, and for this thing I besought the Lord thrice that I, that it might depart from me. He said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. For most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Okay, God, I'm talking about, really, I'm talking about glorying now. Things like they call a lot of these guys glory and what they know concerning these Hebrew Israelite, I mean, these teachings and stuff like that. And we'll look at some of them for Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 9. Let me get it. Said, right, said, and you have he quickened with, which were dead in trespass and sin, where in time past you walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the era, the, the spirit that now working the children of disobedience. And those children of disobedience today are going to be these guys, the synagogue will say that the Hebrew Israelites and different ones like that. Among whom also you walk in ha and have come saving time past and loss of your flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and of the mind, where by nature the children are wrapped, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he hath loved us, even when we were dead in sins, and have quickened us together. You hear that guy with Christ, by grace are you saved. Do you hear that, my friend, you Hebrew Israelites? If you get saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, what we call you know the Hebrew names of God and speaking Hebrew and calling and using the Hebrew names of Messiah and all that. That ain't how you get saved. You ain't do no work. And and have raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Okay, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. Okay, and, it, and his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. Listen now, listen now. For by grace are you saved, okay, through faith. Okay, and, and that are not of yourselves. Okay, no works involved. Speaking and using Hebrew names and all the things of God and stuff like that. And tell me, using Hebrew names of God when you pray and all that and different things, trying to get a prayer out so the prayer through. No, you don't do that. That ain't how, that ain't how it work. You don't get saved by keeping the law, statutes, commandments of God and using Hebrew names. That Hebrew religion didn't say none of them guys. They had to walk in faith and believe in the, in the belief of the Messiah and things like that. For by grace are you saved through faith that is not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Listen now, not of works, least any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God had before ordained, that we should walk in them. Okay, God, you see that down? We're walking in obedience to God, that we shall walk in them. Okay, God, and I'm going to keep going here. I must keep going. I'm going to go to 2 Thessalonians here. Let's look at something here I got over here, 2 Thessalonians. And, and we, we, we'll get an idea here. We'll just look at it. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 through 13. It says, For the mystery of they would do if already work, for the who, for he who let him, will let until he be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed. That mystery of iniquity is working strong today, people. It's working strong. The mystery of iniquity, okay, the spiritual wickedness is high in dark places. And the powers of darkness are working today. They're working strong because they, they bewitching a lot of people. You got a lot of people that, uh, you know, going to vote for Donald Trump this time because of what they see happening in the world today and how Donald Trump made these guys feel sorry for him playing the victim and all of that. And these guys are ready to vote for Donald Trump. They've seen how, what kind of performance that Joe Biden put on. And that 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 performance that Joe Biden put on is intentional, or or is is uh I mean or is true, 
because but they knew it though. But I think it's intentional, guys. Okay, both Democrats and Republicans know this. It's intentional to get you guys to vote for Donald Trump. Okay, guys, this guy, as far as I'm concerned, is the Antichrist, the prophesied Antichrist. Okay, you got no question about it. I mean, you got plenty of scripture that fulfill that. I know some of you guys say, well, he, he's married to a woman. It's the scripture say he won't have no desire for a woman. Say so he's married to a woman. Well, that's what it looked like to you on the outside. Okay, that's what it looked like to you. He's, he's married to a woman. Okay, people, none of the children look like him. None of them. Okay, guys, I mean, you guys cannot handle the truth. I'm not going to get into this. I'm just messing with my time. You guys can't handle the truth. Okay, you don't want it. You're too afraid of it. All of you guys that look at my video, you're too afraid of it. You cannot handle it. You guys take the, the, subscribe to my channel and take it back. I don't care, man. I'm not voting for Donald Trump. For I'm concerned, Donald Trump is the prophesied Antichrist. And the likeness of him is over there in the... Is over there in New York City. Okay, that Statue of Liberty over there is the Antichrist statue with the corona on his head. I told you now, coronavirus came in with Donald Trump in office. Okay, you got, you got I know that stuff, just really thinking about him, coming to understand it will shock and shake you up. So people don't want that. They don't want that feeling. They're afraid of that. Even the Hebrew Israelites don't talk about stuff like that. Okay, people, I'm going to talk about it. And I don't care if you guys like it or not. I'm serious. I don't care. I care absolutely nothing about that because the Bible said you would you reject truth. But you ain't got but a short period of time. Donald Trump will be reelected back in office. The Supreme Court now gave him power to be free from any punishment or anything. He got immunity now, full immunity to be the, the operating the dictator rulership. Okay, guys. Yeah. This gold hair, the crown. His head, the sun god, yeah, that's him. Now I'm just gonna tell you, like I can, I can care about you guys getting upset because you reject and hate truth, and that's what we get. That's how I arrived over here in Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians chapter seven, verse thirteen. Let's look at it, and then shall that wicked be revealed, okay, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. When the Lord Jesus Christ come back and step foot on earth, he paying and that Christ. He'll see the Antichrist face to face. And he's, he's saying the word. He, he can repay them that hate him to their faces. He'll repay the Antichrist to his face. Word is true. No question about it. You get to see him face to face. Okay, God. Even him who's coming is out to work and saved with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And no question about that. Doing it today in a way. Even that bewitching that these guys use on you guys. That they use on you to, 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 to get the emotion of drawn in and different things like that. Everything is messed up in the world today. So you guys say, and all that, and Donald Trump going to be the one to fix it. Yeah, he's the Antichrist. Yeah, you'll see. You'll see what your own eyes. Wait till you get reelected back in the office. They already tell you that in so many ways. He already said, I'm saying he's the chosen one. Many things this guy said. And that's why I said, I'm thinking about making a video on this guy and go into depth on him and, and just give it to you. I don't care. It may not get but two or three views because I'm saying he's the Antichrist. And you guys ain't gonna look at the video anyway. Uh, but I, I still may make it anyway. I do video like that. I know not, the video not gonna be that popular. I'm gonna get maybe three or four views off of it. Doesn't matter. It's up. Okay. When he get back in the office and he start doing foolishness, one day you guys might realize when a new reset come out, he back and, and different things like that. Okay, I gotta keep going. Uh, well, said so even him who's coming is after working on Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. With all the sinners of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they receive not their love or the truth, that they might be saved, and that goes back over into the Hebrew Israelites and different ones like that. And they false doctrine believe they get caught up in their coat and being brainwashed and stuff like that. Yeah, you guys too. Listen now, and for this call, God shall send strong delusion that they should believe a lie, and that's what you guys have today. You guys believe that you guys won't have the truth or the Bible. What we see in the Bible, you don't want that. Okay, God give you to believe a lie and be damned. Okay, simple as that. You go to hell for your trouble. Okay, and for this God, and for this cause, God should send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brother, beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and the belief of the truth, okay, God, that's why I told you, you want, stay now reminded fundamental about your faith that you see in the Bible, that's all you got to do, believe that, if you don't, you're going to have these curses come up on you, okay, in the Bible, we see, you got curses in the Bible, okay, God, 
let's go to Psalm chapter 34 here, guys. I'm going to finish up. I'm going to go as far as I can go. Let's cut off on it. Okay. Psalm 34, uh, verse 15 uh, and 17. I guess I'm going to skip one. I might read both of them. So the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open until they cry. Okay, you hear that, guys? We're moving on to something different now. Talking about getting a prayer out to God. Okay, people? It didn't say by using the Hebrew name of God. It don't say that. Okay, guys, you still looking at the video? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm moving on to something else. Okay, we're we moving on to something now. We're talking about a prayer now. See how many of you guys can get a prayer? I listen now to the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. That righteousness come through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on his righteousness. You got his spirit. Okay, now God ready to listen to your prayer. You calling him father too. Okay, we hear, you hear that people? You calling him father. And then we use the term, we end it with it in the name of Jesus. Okay, okay, we end it with it in, in, in Jesus' name. And all of that, in Jesus' name. Okay? Okay, people? Okay, and I get back to the eyes of the Lord uh, upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. Then said nothing about using the Hebrew names of God to get your prayers open to have a personal relationship with him because you use the Hebrew name. That is not salvation, man. Okay, come on now. That's not salvation. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. You hear that, people? to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Okay, people, verse 17. The righteous, okay, those that's in Christ Jesus, only righteous you get today is in Christ Jesus. Only righteous you get is in Christ Jesus we see in the Bible here today. That's your righteousness. If you, don't, if you go outside there, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. You got, it's got to be in Christ Jesus that we have in the Bible today. Millions and millions of people, okay, the sand of the sea, go through Christ Jesus today that we see in this Bible today, people. Okay, you don't, you don't exclude yourself from it. You count yourself unworthy of eternal life in Christ Jesus. The righteous cry, and the Lord hear and deliver them out of their troubles. Okay, and that word cry, it can mean a cry out to him in prayer. Okay, people, it's just that simple. God hear him. Okay, guy. Bible said, cast all your cares upon him because he cared for you. Okay, and it says Hebrew names and different things like that. James chapter 5, verse 16. Okay, people. James chapter 5, verse 16. Listen now, very important. Confess your faults one to another and, and, pray, and pray one for another that you may be healed. Listen now, the, the, the effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Okay, God, it didn't say anything about using the Hebrew names of God is simply telling you how to get your prayer through and what the, what you need to have to get your prayers through to God. Okay, that's what he's that, that's what God is looking for today. Okay, guys, and I'm going to Matthew chapter 21, verse 15 and 16. Uh that, that's fine here. Matthew 21, verse 15 and 16. Say, it said, when the chief priest and the scribes saw the wonderful things that, that he did to my Jesus and the children crying in the temple, uh, in the temple, uh, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were so displeased. Uh, excuse me. Now keep going. And, and said unto him, here is thou that these, these say, and Jesus said unto them, yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings that I have perfected prayer? Praise. You hear that, guy? You, you you see that now? And let me say this to people, and, 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 and I can say this. You know, we know when a baby is small, when they start to learn how to talk, and mom start to say words like, some of the first words that come out their mouth is da-da, okay? They start to say da-da. They start to say abba, okay? You hear that, people? Ba-ba-ba. They start to say father, okay, guys? You read it now? Out of the mouth of babes, thou hast perfected prayers. Okay, all that baby talk, it called it Babylon. That's where we get the term Babel from. Okay, or Babylon. Okay, the city of confusion. Okay, or the land of confusion, guys. So we, we see it there. <clears throat> and let me keep going, people. You, you see that, people? And then the mamas teach them to say, Mama. <laughs> They thought to say, Mama, they, the, 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 I got a few of the scriptures here left, and I'm going to hurry you. I might can finish if I, 
if I hurry up. Ezekiel chapter 37, 1 through 3, and then 11 through 14. Let me get it here, guys. I might can, I might can, I got a little time left here. Let me finish up. Ezekiel 37, 1 through 3. Let, let's, let, let's, let's go here. It said, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out into the spirit. Of, and uh, No, I'm not going to read that one. I read that. I'm talking about the dry bones, guys. We're talking about dry bones. I did that one. If I'm not mistaken, I did that one in the last video, people. I'm talking about the, 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 the dry bones there. Uh, let me look at some. Uh, okay. Yeah, Israel dry bones today. Okay, guys. Anything outside the, the, the covenant promise of the Lord Jesus Christ, they dry bones today until God started to deal with them again. He started to deal with them over there, you know, Daniel 70 week when they get started to build a temple and all that, and the temple building, trouble some time. Uh, and then Jacob's trouble started, had to run out the land, the Jacob's trouble there. And God started to deal with them while they're in the mountains and stuff like that. So they dry bones. They'll break, he'll bring them back though and bring them in the land, he'll raise them up. He'll, they get saved. They dry today. Okay, but he'll bring them back. Okay, guys. Anyway, let's keep going here. I got to keep going. I don't want to miss up. Going to Hebrews chapter 10. I don't have but a few more left. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1 through 9. Let's look at something. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never, who, uh, with those sacrifices uh, which they offer year by year, continue to make comes there are perfect. For they would not have uh, ceased to be offered because the worship of one's person should have no uh, more conscience of sins. Uh, <clears throat> and, and and I'm gonna skip down, guys, just a little bit. I I skip down because we 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 we'll look at some here, people, and we we'll go. I go to verse five real quick. Say for for wherefore when he comes into the world, he says, sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body uh, that has prepared him. God not God not uh, pleased him uh, sacrifice things like that apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. He that by he God prepared a body for him that he would sacrifice himself. Okay, guys, his body. Okay, uh, then said, I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. And today is written of us to do his will also, people. I read you some scriptures about that. Man shall not live by bread alone, but it word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And we to do, we, and we to do everything the Lord Jesus Christ say. Whatever he tell us to do, we to do it. We see that in the book of Matthew to the book of Revelation. Okay, my friend, that's what we're looking at today, you New Testament, New Testament uh, saints, you two, New Testament Hebrews uh, and uh, and Gentiles today that's in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what God is calling for today. He don't want you to be careful to go back into the Hebrew things, uh, the names and all that, because you find yourself observing certain other things that had to do with Hebrew. You can get in that now, people. God will give you over to, get, to believe that stuff and get, get kind of get off into it. And when he says sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings of sin, thou wouldest not, neither had his pleasure therein, which are offered by law. Then he then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He take away the first that that he uh that he may establish the second. Okay, God. And I'm gonna keep going here. I, I don't have to stay in that long. I just wanted to read that. I, I wasn't gonna read, but I decided to go ahead and read it anyway. I always playing around with my time. Uh Romans chapter 2, verse 24. Let's look over here, guys. It said that. Romans chapter 2, verse 24. Make sure I'm in the right place. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, and it's written. Okay, God, they they using the name, and it's being blasphemed today also because these guys put it out there so it can be blasphemed. We see the name Yahoo right there. The, the, the name Yahoo we see all the time. And we, we look at the first letter, three letters right there, say Yah, the name that you guys use all the time. And they got the two O's on the end of it. You see Yahoo. And it, it, it's saying Yahoo. Means, you know, like, who is God? You get what I'm saying? That that they should serve him. Or uh, even reverence his holy name. And so we, we see that the enemy even put these names out there. Put, the, put a name out. They come up with the name. These guys know this stuff, people. Okay, and some of you guys know it, too. You probably knew this stuff before I did. I, I've never really paid a lot of attention to that that word Yahoo, but we see it there, and we got a word Yahoo in the Bible. They sound the same, don't they? Okay, they can sound the same. Okay, so you can see these guys mocking God. 
Okay, people, they mock God all the time. The enemy mock God. And you help them do it by using the Hebrew, trying to talk about the Hebrew names and stuff like that. Okay, guys, you, you give occasion for that yourself by even bringing these Hebrew sacred names up. And let me keep going. Uh, and I go back for, for the name of God is blaspheming among the Gentiles through you as it is written. You hear that, my friend, you Hebrew Israelite guys, guys looking at the video, some of you guys that are not saying, I'm talking to those guys. And if this thing apply to you, it apply to, it, it's going to it's going to your direction also. Let me get another one in Zephaniah chapter three, verse seven through nine. Listen, people, seven through nine. It says, "I said, sure, that will fear me, uh, that will receive instruction, so that the one should not be cut off." Talking about the talking about the Hebrew, be cut off. However, I, so if I punish them, they arose early and equipped with all they're doing. Okay, therefore wait ye upon me, said the Lord. To, uh, let me make yeah. Uh, therefore, wait ye upon me, save the Lord, until the day that I rise upon the upon to do, to the prey. For my determination is gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms of the, and pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. And he's not just talking about being jealous for the people of Israel. He's talking about being jealous for the city of Jerusalem people. Okay, guys, that's what he's really talking about. Okay, I mean, these guys do abominable things. Yeah, they go through Jacob's trouble for that stuff. Even today, they go through Jacob's trouble for that. A lot of people, in the land of Israel be destroyed. And But God will build the ruins of, you know, Tabernacle David up later on, stuff like that. He'll build that up, the ruins. Okay, that I means going to destroy all of that for it to be built back up again. He'll build it up during the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll build it up, people. Okay, guys. And, and so God is not just jealous for the people. He's jealous for the saints also, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, God, and, and let me keep going. Listen, very important. For then when I turn to the people, a prayer language that they might uh, call upon the name of the Lord to observe him with one consent. Okay, God, he's going to turn to the people a pure language. Don't say what pure language. He, said, he didn't say another pure language. Okay, he didn't say a Hebrew language. Okay, and things like that. He just said he's going to turn to the people a pure language. Okay, guys? So the language is not pure. They all them corrupted. They even the Hebrew. Language, all them corrupt. They brought it out of Egypt with them, guys. They were Hebrews in Egypt. Brought the language out. Okay, guys? And God always met these guys with their language. He didn't bring, he didn't give them a language. Don't say that nowhere in the Bible. It don't say that. Even if he chose the people, he didn't, he chose the people with their own language. They already had that language. Okay, they were cheering Israel when, when they went into bondage, when they went into Egypt. Okay, people, they come out Hebrews. Okay, they go into captivity, 70 year exile captivity. When we see when they come out of there as Hebrew, we see them, when we see them in the New Testament during the time of the Lord Jesus Christ, they are Jews. Okay, got Paul called them Hebrew, called himself a Hebrew. They still Hebrew, but they call them Jews because of what they were practicing then. They call Hebrew, and they were some wicked individuals. Okay, but yet some did get saved during, you know, during Lord Jesus Christ ministry and stuff like that, and got filled with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Okay, and so God gonna turn back to the people of pure language people. Okay, that, that listen now, and I read, I go back and read that. Said. I said, for then when I return to the people of pure language, that they may all call upon the, excuse me, God, the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Okay, they're going to call upon the name of the Lord uh, to serve him with one consent. Okay, God, going to give them a pure language. That way they can call upon his holy name. His holy name going to be holy back during that time for good reason then. They're going to have pure language. They're going to have no corrupt language going on to use to call God, to call upon the name of the Lord. Okay, God, but well, God had to reveal his name, even though the language is different thing, like they were corrupt, and God knew it. He still had to reveal himself to Abraham and Moses and different ones like that, the prophets. He did have to reveal himself and his name to these guys. Okay, he had to do that in their language, not, not a language he gave them, but in their language. Okay, guys, his holy name in their language. Okay, but that, that, that holy name, the sacred holy name is reserved for, for those guys in heaven. Okay, in heaven. That's where it's mentioned at. In heaven. And let's look at something here. Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. We'll see something else here. Just, just look at that. Say he's and this is Lord Jesus Christ talking. And he said, 
He said, he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give unto him a white stone, and that stone a new name written, which no man nor save he that receive of it. Okay, we're talking about new names during that time period, people. Okay, we're talking about new names during that millennial reign of Lord Jesus Christ, and things like that. And we go ahead and Revelation chapter 3, verse 12. Then him that overcome will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. He will, shouldn't go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which come down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. Okay, guys, all these different names and different things like that, that they have today of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said he's going to write upon him his new name. Okay, and the father have a new name. Okay, guys, he won't have, he'll have a new name that, we, that we'll go by doing a little rain, the name that be sacred and, and, and holy, and you won't have anyone there blaspheming his holy names of him that really express who he is. Okay, people, his, his, his deity and his power and things like that, his nature, okay, you know, and stuff like that, divine nature, okay, guys, and him being the king of king and lord of lords and God of gods, you can, you hear me, people, and different things like that. So God will be doing something new, people, during the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ and throughout eternity, okay, when the new heaven and the new earth show up here on earth. God will be doing something new and different things like that. So we're not, we not during the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ, we'll see some different names of God, the whole world, we have, we understand the sacred names to a God that God used back in the day. We understand that. We'll be looking at that. But that's not that was relegated to the Hebrews back then. Okay, people? But God is dealing with Jew and Gentile today. Okay, he's Jew, he dealing with Jew and Gentile today. And he was and he's revealing them different names, stuff like that, looking at his point at his character and different things like that. And his uh you know him being the all sufficient one and self, you know all, you know self existent and different things like that. His power, his might, and we had they had different names that God was when he, you know, when he, you know, talked to these guys when they talked, then when they used them and put them in different contexts to express, uh, you know, his character and his nature and stuff like that, and his ability. Okay, guys, yeah, when we get to the New Testament. We start to look at the things of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we start to come away from those names. We, we got good reason anyway, because if God did away with the, the, the God closed the door in the Hebrews for that time, he did away with the old that he might establish the new, that he bring in the new. Okay, and we're looking at God as our father today. We call him father. I can't see one time uh, for the past some 20 years I've been saved. I can't see in a time where I would have called him by a name, a Hebrew name, uh, that I didn't see in the Bible a sacred name. That I didn't see, and I promise you guys, I have read the Bible for the past twenty some years. Okay, guys, and so what I have today, the way I talk or whatever I say, that come from the Bible. God allowed me. If my speech ain't all that good. That's what I have. Okay, guys, and that's what God allowed me to have. He's pleased for. I'm concerned. He's okay with that. Okay, guys, he's okay with how I talk and speak. And we got scriptures in the Bible. Even Paul said that he didn't. He didn't have eloquent speech. It wasn't necessary. Okay, to get out the gospel. Because if you get out the gospel and you preach and teach like you should, the things of the Bible, the things of God, people come under conviction. They allow the Holy Spirit to bring people, rightly bring people under conviction of their sin and see that they need Christ Jesus. And they get saved. And you let them know they have to, you teach them the whole counsel of God, that they have conditions to meet. They have to forsake all. They have to deny themselves. Okay, people, they had to bear Christ's reproach. Okay, they had to take up their cross and follow Christ. They can't say their lives or their lifestyle or their social status and different things like that and preach them the truth of the Bible. Okay, guys, okay, and the names that we see in the Bible we have today, those are the names that we use and that definition for all those names in the Bible. The, term, the title God in the Bible, we see that's relegated against over, over small gods that on the earth here. Okay, he's the God of gods. Okay, I gave you that scripture in the last uh, last video where you can see that in the, in the Old Testament. He's the God of gods. Okay, people, and he's Lord of lords. Okay, and he's king of kings. Okay, people, I mean, we, we get all of that. The Bible teaches what we need to know. 
So there's no need for people to try to allow people to bring you back in the bondage, God, by trying to bring you back up on the law, statute, commandments of God that God gave the Hebrews back in time past. Okay, God, and he was marched off in the captivity a number of times, stuff like that. He lost a lot of the history and information and stuff like that. But when they destroyed the thing, then when he lost, when they marched these guys off in the captivity, they weren't able to bring their books and none of their history, none of that stuff they was able to bring. But God preserved a lot of that stuff for them. He had to. That's why we had the prophets and different things like that today, Book of Daniel and stuff like that. Okay, you know, uh, our Book of Isaiah, Jeremiah. Okay, Ezra, okay, and you know, a lot of these, these other books and stuff like that. We have a lot of history that God wanted us to have. Okay, God, even though these guys were marched off into captivity several times, stuff like that, God still preserved a lot of their history. And we get an idea what, you know, that, that what, uh, the, where man come from and things like that, how man come into earth, what kind of, you know, <clears throat> who's, who's, who's the son of God. And what God did to save us from sin. We get all that out of the Bible. Okay, and things, things like that. But anyway, guys, God bless you for looking at the video. And I want to do this video, guys. I'm not all that. I've not spent a lot of time looking at Hebrew names, stuff like that, studying the Hebrew names of God and the meanings. I got them written down here. I got them written down on paper here. The Hebrew names of God, they mean and what they mean and stuff like that. Even knowing all of that, knowing that, when I when I get to the when I get to the New Testament, we start to read it, and we start to see something different here. What God is doing now, okay? He's we we call him Father now. We don't we, we don't even use the term Abba. We it's there. He gave it to us. We can say Abba Father, cause it's there in the Bible. God sent forth the Spirit crying in our hearts, crying Abba Father, Father, Father. Okay, we can use those terms today, people, that we see in the Bible, the Hebrew and English word. We can use them the way the Bible presented to us, but it's good to stay in the confines of Scripture. Anyway, guys, again, I'm going to be back with another video, God willing. I might go ahead and do something uh, looking at this Donald Trump Antichrist figure here. There's people scared to uh, rep, you know, acknowledge they don't believe it's him. And that just goes to show you people are on a strong delusion today. So many of them looking at voting for this guy. They don't want to vote for Trump. Let me say this. The, the time is right. If the anti, if another Antichrist figure going to come up on the scene, the time would be perfect uh, for him to show up now. If he don't, I'm telling you guys, if, the, if that charismatic figure don't show up like the one that showed up with Obama, when Obama showed up on, first showed up on the scene, that cares, he was re really charismatic, and he, you know, people like the way he talked and his message and things like that. And a lot of white people bought into that also. And a lot of thought that he could be the Antichrist without even knowing scripture. We didn't know scripture. We weren't paying attention, reading prophecies concerning the Antichrist. We weren't really studied up on it. And the Holy Spirit wasn't revealing like that. Okay, so we didn't really know. And I thought that I told my family, well, this guy might be the Antichrist. But I would study scripture like I should have been. And this guy came and went, and he wasn't fulfilling prophecy concerning Antichrist. So you couldn't put him there. Okay, guy, and Antichrist power is given him. Okay, he's voted in the office. He's given his power and things like that. Okay, he's given his power. He don't take it. He don't fight for it and all of that. He's used words, his, 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 the words he used and different things like that. Is what gets the people to vote for him. They look at, and right now, people look at the times that we're in and look at how bad things are, are, are even over here in this country and around the world and over there in the land of Israel and stuff like that. You know, Trump talking like he can bring peace to Israel over there. He talked like he can stop the, the, the war with Ukraine and Russia. Uh, he he talked like he can make things better over here in America. He do a lot of talking. People won't, because they people are sold after uh, material things and the cares of this world. And, you know, it's more like political humanism. They sold on things like this. So they can look in the vote for Trump. You know, the only, only way Trump don't get to be president, uh, um, this this charismatic individual show up. He has the opportunity to show up now because they don't pretty much want Biden back in. And some people still going to vote for Biden. Okay, guy, they'll still vote for this guy because they want you to really understand what what loyalty what loyalty is and what it looks like 
Okay, they want you to even when a president is down and out, they still want you to stand with him. And so they they he might stay on the ticket. Okay, guy, he might stay on the ticket for that reason there. But I mean, other than that, the time is right for somebody, even from the Democratic side, to come out. Uh, that's that's be charismatic and get the and get the people and win these guys back. That's looking at voting for Donald Trump to win them back. And then we had to look at this guy and see if he's the Antichrist. And we had to look at some things, prophets concerning Antichrist. But I don't think it's going to happen, people. I'm going to tell you that now. You, the, your Antichrist figure is right there in your face, okay? And a lot of you guys that look at the video may vote for this guy back in. Anyway, uh, God bless you guys. Uh, Lord willing, I'll be back with another uh, topic or a new video, a new segment, things like that. God bless you guys. Thank you for looking at the video.